and we're live hello folks let's see if this all's working i know i just streamed last week but it feels like ages because i actually had to i had to do a lot of prep work to get this save back in order uh i'm roll it's been so long since i've played it because i was on vacation we did the big the big voice actor live stream last week um and then something happened before i went on vacation so i haven't streamed this save in like a month so i actually had to roll back versions because we've been doing so much work on chapter three that i was kind of afraid of what would happen if i brought my save right up to that to this current alpha code so i'm like yeah, i'm gonna roll back to the last alpha we had before uh or the from like right after i last streamed hello let me know how my sound or how my sound is let's fire off a few rounds here to test game sound hello dog meat oh it looks like i'm thirsty oh, that's right this is this is the game i gotta pay attention to all the crud in my inventory uh oh, are we short on water? Have we got any Nuka Cola? Does that? I can't remember if that satisfied thirst. You feel the caffeine in your veins. I'm gonna be feeling a lot of caffeine in my veins tonight. I got back-to-back -back coffees lined up here. One of them is a a 30 ounce uh, iced coffee that I got when I walked my dog this evening, and I haven't cracked into yet. It's it's so tempting, but I had I had like a half a cup of hot coffee, and I'm like leftover. Before I uh, took the dog on a walk, and I'm like, oh, that's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough. Volume seems good. Awesome. All right, I guess we can go. Well, we're waiting for 9 o'clock as usual to get started with the gameplay. I'll uh, head back, and because we're in, we're in hardcore, so or in survival, so that means no fast travel. So we gotta got to hoof it, get back to a settlement, and get some water. Hello, deep dive. Oh, what'd you find, dog meat? What'd you find? Something good. Some water, I hope. <coughs> gotta remember to be stealthy, stealthy. Oh, here we go. What do we got here? What do we got to take this out with? Maybe this will work? Yep, that'll do. That'll do, pig. Alright. A clipboard for a spring? Sure. I don't remember what we need, so we'll just take everything. Take all the junk. Hey, buddy. Makes movement items very helpful. What, what do you mean? What Are there, like, uh, movement speed items in here that I'm just, I've never seen or I've just completely ignored because they're not very good? They're not super useful outside of this? You know what I need? I need to start... I'm going to have to... I've been, like, being really, really slow. Like, what level am I at? Level 11, I still only have... Basically the one settlement, because I've been trying to be super conservative about resources, but I think maybe it's time I set up a secondary base. Maybe that's what we'll do today. Set up like a forward operating base for working in this region down here. What quests mode was I working on? Suburban Disturbance. Oh, we never went back to Preston. Okay. All right, well, first things first, we gotta go get some water. Do I see the uh, pic I take on Twitter? No, I have been, excuse me, I've been off Twitter, uh, last couple of days, because I don't know what they, I don't know what they're changing in it, I know that, uh, Mr. Musk has said they're going to change all sorts of stuff, it, I feel like I just am getting a whole lot of random people on my Twitter feed now, and so it's like, it's harder to find the people that I, that I actually follow. Um, and so I found myself like treating it like TikTok, and I was just like browsing for hours and like this isn't good I don't I don't have time for this um, So I'm kind of taking a break from it, but I'll pop on later and check it out All right, well, why can't I hit any of you? I know I'm bad. But I don't think I'm that bad. Am I? I guess I am Come back here. Oh, oh this one wants to fight. Oh God Heal your companion. Oh god. I'm gonna <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> okay then. There's a legendary effect. It's on the hat from Far Harbor. Oh. Is it just like increased walk speed or something? Oh, there we go. My chair was all weird. All right, let's try this again. Take out this thing. Oof. 
Jason Lokrans, thank you for the donation. Thanks for another stream. Let's go! Indeed, let's go. Uh, excited to uh, get back to hardcore mode here. And I'm actually going to stop playing quite so slow today. I mean, like, I'm still going to be conservative about it, because the whole point of this playthrough is to show you guys how to succeed at uh, hardcore mode. Um, but I've been playing, I've been, like, overdoing it to the point where it's... Probably not looking particularly appealing, uh, unless I know some people really like to go super slow mode though. So like that, is, I think that kind of tends to be the same crowd. People who love uh, all the mods that add complexity tend to also like to play their game for a very long time, based on the discussions I've had with folks. All right, let's see if I can get back without hitting those blood bugs this time. Yeah, one of the reasons I've been playing so slow in the saves is because I'm just trying to get the second uh, industrial unlocked. Because once I get organic materials unlocked, it becomes a heck of a lot easier to balance out uh, balance out settlements in the early game. So just need that cloth to take care of uh, repairing the the what do you call them? The uh, water, the hand pumps. We need to pull the cherry. All right. Okay, I think those. Blood bugs are over here somewhere. It feels really dumb that I gotta dodge blood bugs. <laughs> that is how weak I am. I guess I could be using my proper weapon for this. And I do have a sniper rifle here. Let's see here. What's my what am I in right now? Yeah, of course. I'm sniper rifle. This is this is like the de my, my default build. I think this is most people's default build for uh the Bethesda games. Like they're really they're you know, we like to pretend that they're full open RPGs, but really they're uh, they're open world stealth sniper games. That's what they are. Playing on anything else is hard mode. And the rest of this is already hard mode, so I'm going to make my combat experience at least reasonable. As you can see, I need all the help I can get. The blood bug kicking my butt. If you're just tuning in, we'll get started in for real in about 10 minutes right now. I'm just trying to make it back to my settlements. We're on survival here. So that I can uh, refuel up on purified water. Oh, what's going on? Wow. Yeah, I thought somebody was faking. Oh, what is going on with the FPS around here? Nice job, dog meat. Tear him apart. That's my kind of encounter. One feral ghoul. Hey. A toy alien. All right, just what we needed. Oh, didn't mean to grab dog meat. All right, where are we at? Where are we at? And did I enable? Did I enable? Yeah, I have a mod to enable saving. That's right. At least I think I do. Wait, no, did that just not save? I could have sworn I had a mod to enable saving. Pretty sure I do. I think it must be an FRC plugin. Because I didn't see anything in my load order that was. Oh, where the Wild One Cemetery. This is not where we want to be. Usually cut my experience to about 25%. I find leveling rate to make the game more fun. Melee is very OP in FO4 and advanced, and you can really tear enemies up. Armor can make. Armor can make cloth. Oh, like if I scrap armor, like scrap the armor I find on people. That is something I'm really unfamiliar with because I uh, I tend to just hoard everything until I get, until late game and then I have a scrap scrapper perk and then I go rip it all up, all up. Oh yeah, this is the this is a disappointing encounter. I always come here expecting to earn myself a settler. I need to make that into a mod myself. Somebody probably already has, right? Somebody's made it. So if you save this dude, yeah. he joins your settlement. Sure, we'll take all this stuff. How's it going? Hi. Huh? I know you didn't kill them all. There's still more here. I'll just take the meat and run. Oh, oh, there they are. Thought I saw some. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Where's the rest of the family? Never just one mole rat. Oh, here he comes. Oh, he went underground. 
coward. <laughs> coward is more rat. Uh oh. Take that. There's still somebody around. I saw him. Where'd he go? Found you. Voice. Huh? Oh no, dog meat. What are you doing over here? Oh, you're. Are you soloing a mole rat? Not hiding this time. Just a second, buddy. Stay gone. Was actually useful in combat there. Nice work. Hey. Huh? You got nothing, huh? All right, dog meat. I'm coming. Like, are we out of stim packs? No. I guess that's a real possibility in this. Let's see. What's our what's our stim pack looking like? Our stash. Oh yeah, we got 28. We're good. We're good. Oh man, that settler almost bit it. Look at all this free, delicious meat. Oh, <laughs> he dropped dead from the poison. Sorry, buddy. Well, won't let this stuff go to waste. Okay. Alright, I guess now we'll go in the cave then, since we managed to clear everything. Yeah! That's for you guys. Oh no, I didn't think you were reload. Wow, Dogmeat's tearing it up. Good work, boy. Oh, the one of those had a gold watch on him. Hey. <laughs> nice work, Dogmeat. Just needs to put pin him in a corner. What do we got here? Oh, hello. Hello. Is there anything else in here? No, just go straight through. Okay. Hungry from lack of food. Good thing I just acquired me a lot of meat. All right, five more minutes, and then we'll uh, we'll stop dinking around and actually uh, play this. All right, let's see here. No, you don't want to. There we go. Properly fed. That's what. I was looking for. All right, we're still we're still a little bit uh, a little bit thirsty, and I'm ill. Oh, good. What does that one do? Well, let's see. Show effects, weakness, take play. Oh, no. No, no, no. We cannot have that. All right. We need some uh, antibiotics then, right? Nope. Come on. Wrong button. There we go. Antibiotics. Come on. Show me antibiotics. Yes. And are those going to. Do those make me more thirsty too? <laughs> it's, a, it's a perpetual cycle. There was a great uh, um, Viva La Dirt League video on, uh, on the vicious cycle of survival needs. Shortwind, holy cow! Thank you for the huge donation, a hundred bucks. Jesus, thank you so much. Here's the Starfield not sucking and Sim Starfield being a real thing. Uh, I hope Star, I hope Starfield is amazing, and I hope that Bethesda releases the mod tools right away. That would be incredible. That would be incredible. Um, I also hope that uh, we deliver on Chapter Three, so that uh, I can actually play Starfield in peace and not feel like I'm letting you guys down. Because if, if chapter three is just like, you know, if we if we screw the pooch and it's just a buggy mess, I'm not going to stop and play Starfield until it's until it's in fighting shape. Damn, man, that is a very generous donation. The guy, oh, and shout out to all of you guys for uh, uh, hooking it up at uh, last week's stream. We raised a ton of money for charity. That was awesome. And hilarious. My face hurt after that for like two hours. I laughed so hard. There was so many times where I just had to mute myself because, like, my favorite, I think my favorite moment turn that was when uh, uh, Cyrus kept saying "fat boy" instead of "fat man," 
And my at first I was about to correct him, and I'm like, no, we gotta let this ride because it was so freaking funny. Uh, so good, so good. Okay, I own this other one already, right? Well, apparently I didn't get the smokes. Sleeping on that. Ooh, hey, empty bottle. Here we go. Okay, so maybe we just build a pump here. And, like, if it breaks because we're not taking care of maintenance here, that's fine. Because we can always manually repair it. <laughs> we can just use this as our, like, little pit stop for water. That works for me. So let's think about where we're gonna be going. So we're gonna be we're gonna be playing over in this general vicinity now. Next, head, excuse me, head generally toward Diamond City. So I guess we'll build it in the southeast, which is I have no idea. Why can I not forget this LC? Oh no, I was facing the right. I did pick the right way. All right, no, 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 oh no, no, no. Scrap, 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 quick. Ah, the rads. Did I not get them all? Oh, there's just a little bit of a delay before they destroy. Got it. All right. All right. Let's put this guy over here somewhere. There we go. Did we miss some loot? No, we're good. Nope, that's not what I wanted. I want this one. Fill bottle. Okay, another, uh, let's see, 858 and another two minutes, and we'll get, we'll get going. Um, I should probably fix my health situation there. It's not looking good. Now, what is it that's got my AP nuked? Is that because I'm tired? Is that what does that? Or is that dehydration? Oh, wow, I had a lot of bottles on me. Wow. There's a cooking spit at the back of the back. You could use the pump near it. Oh, okay. Guess Daddy, thank you for the donation. So when is the next Super Thirst Chats for charity? Um, I don't know. We'll take a little break. We don't want to... We don't want to... Uh, we're going to need to give your guys' wallets time to recover. Um, nah, we'll, we'll probably do... We'll probably do one, like... I don't know. It might be like a three or four time a year thing. We'll see. Um, I'm going to be part of, a, of a, a big charity in May already called uh, Voice of Palooza. At least I'm supposed to be. I don't know. We haven't like locked down the day yet. So, um, But uh, you guys are should catch me doing an extra stream, extra stream uh, one day in May for charity. And then, uh, yeah, and then sometime after that, we'll, I'll sync up with the voice actors to see who's available for... Uh, for another super chat stream because that was so much fun so much fun we will definitely do one again okay so there's a cooking spit around here somewhere oh it's nine o'clock holy cow i got i got distracted there by looting welcome folks to today's stream we are on hardcore mode this is episode four so week four playing this the episode three was about a month ago um probably longer than that it's been so long since i did it because uh, i had vacations and, and stuff come up and then last week of course we did the infamous uh voice actor the voice actor stream which was amazing and if you didn't catch it and you and you've got and you want to just laugh for two hours straight definitely nice. go watch uh, last week's stream it was really really funny and we raised, raised a lot of money for charity uh, some mad prompts to all you guys who uh, who donated to that. So today we're going to try and get back into it. For those of you guys who are new to this particular series, um, this is hardcore mode. So this is me playing in survival with all of the, well, I'll say almost all of the Sim Settlements settings turned on, like all the, the advanced mechanics. Um, the one exception is I do not have uh, mortal settlers turned on because I don't want diseases just murdering all my people while I try and sort this stuff out. That's for the... For the uh, true hardcore players, and I'm not quite there. I'm already struggling and asking you guys for help constantly with survival mode because I've never given it a proper playthrough. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So the goal here is to kind of demonstrate what it's like to play SS2 in hardcore mode. Give you guys some uh, inside uh, detail. Holy cow! Uh, inside details on how that works and some strategies that 
I had on paper and in my head when developing all the numbers behind things, and then we're going to hopefully find some flaws in it. I know some of the, the dedicated hardcore players um, have some thoughts on balance and everything, although I think a lot of the, um, you know, no matter what I take away from all this, I will reserve doing anything significant from this playthrough other than fix bugs until after Chapter 3 because it has... So there's what we're looking for, the cooking spit. Uh, has significant new features coming that will dramatically change people's perspective on the balance of, of SS2. Um, and uh, yeah, chapter three, still in development, still going strong. It is a much bigger beast than I anticipated. Um, the uh, Initially, the, the goal had been to release in October of last year. And you know now thinking back on that about how much stuff we would have had to cut to pull that off. It would have been a very, a very sad, sad day to have to, uh, oh wait, I guess I don't wanna, oh wait, so if I do these ones that take water, I assume that then those will heal my thirst too? Is that accurate? Uh, so anyway, chapter three in development, um, and it's gonna have a big impact, I think a big positive impact on making people feel like the, the mod is quite well balanced. Cause there was a, there was a significant, um, there was two significant features that have been on the like planned since we since we got SS2 um, like fully planned out um, that were pushed back to chapter three to, and so like a lot of the balance is like uh, this is gonna be sketch for a while <laughs> until we get until we get to uh, to all these features unlocked. Um, all right, what else do we need? So a lot of this playthrough right now is me just getting used to what I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> in. Uh, in survival mode because I'm not played it. So it looks like I need to eat, I need to drink, and I need to get un over encumbered. So oh my god, look at all these problems. Alright, let's let's start with one thing at a time. Let's let's have a noodle cup. Okay, that did not fix anything. How about I think I need another rat away. How about some purified water? Still thirsty. A ribeye steak, sure. Feel better, still peckish. Uh, mole rat chunks. I just made a whole bunch of those. Oh, how about a rad stag? Plus carry weight. Still not enough carry weight. Alright, well, I'm still thirsty. There's a lot of... I I may very soon be uh, installing a mod to just auto-eat and drink. There we go. Water. Okay. Hydrated. So now I'm just sleepy and over-encumbered. So I can solve one of these very easily. As soon as I do the slow march over to this bench over here. And in the meantime, I'll do. This is a great time for keeping up with chat. Uh, by the way, another another thing for new folks, um, I am notoriously bad at uh, focusing on the game and chat simultaneously. So I tend to do one for a long time and then the other back and forth. And then at the end of the stream, around ten thirty or eleven, so in about an hour and a half or two, I shift gears and just focus on you guys and ignore the game for the most part, other than leaving it running as background uh, material. And, uh, and then I can show you guys stuff if I need to or if you guys want me to. Um, so make sure you at King Gath in your messages so that uh, if I am distracted for a long period of time and I glance back over, I know who's trying to get my attention. All right, let's see here. All right, we're just gonna store all junk. I think actually no, we're gonna we're gonna transfer some stuff manually because I, I learned my store all junk. The problem is then I end up storing those bottles that I need. So we'll stash some of this heavy stuff so that I can stop walking everywhere. All right, let's run back over to our thing. So I think I grabbed a bunch of empty water bottles. Noodle cups and melons give water. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so I think, yeah, somebody had the good idea of let's move this over to the cooking bench. And now I got myself a little, little spot to check it to do the things. There we go. Uh, Nick Carter, is this version 232A sort of? This is like 232A plus some alpha code because um, at various points when I popped onto stream, I had failed to roll back to 232A. So I have some amount of alpha code. Like I think I'm gonna lock it in now at the alpha version I have on here because I don't wanna risk instability on this save. Um, like it's already gonna be at the point where it's very unlikely I will be able to continue this save with chat when chapter three comes out i'll probably have to kill it but most likely when i do my chapter three playthrough on stream i'll be doing 
um, my first playthrough, which was on City Builder difficulty, so like the, the one that most of you play on. And uh, I think that'll be a, a good demonstration for the first playthrough of Chapter 3 when I get to it. But I'm not going to be rushing it. I'm going to take my time because I don't want to spoil it for everybody who hasn't had a chance to see it. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. What else do we got in here? Store all this stuff for now. We'll come back and play with it later. I know you guys said I can get some cloth from it, but I don't think I'm desperate for cloth yet. Cloth yet. All right, now we need to take a nap. Let's go take a, take a nap with that skeleton upstairs. Hey, buddy. You want to you wanna snuggle? How long can I sleep on this? Like five hours, I think? And then it doesn't let me anymore, something like that. It gives me the warning. You're, uh, you awake still tired. Oh, good. Okay. So I got to sleep again. Well, let's try eight hours. Maybe this mattress does qualify. I think it, I think it does not, but maybe I'm wrong. Something, something like there's a five hour limit. Yeah. See, there it goes. You can't sleep more than five hours on a dirty mattress. <laughs> Hey, but that happened to pass enough time for Jake's frequency. Perfect. But let's finish the quest we were on. Also, all right, let's hear. So I, I want to start another settlement. I feel like I've been going so slow. Um, now, part of that was because I wanted to get more plot types unlocked, which after the next quest, we get the um, we get the, the jury-rigged industrial plot or jury-rigged martial plots, which work out great like that. With that, plus what we have already, that's usually enough you can build can build some decent settlements um but i don't want it to do it in these locations like I, I like i don't think i want to do starlight i want to do somewhere else i'm not sure where maybe sunshine maybe overland uh but let's go do let's see here let's do suburban disturbance and we'll go ahead and listen to jake's frequency so we can figure out where our next oops our next uh, thing is because i can't remember <gasps> Oh, that's right. Well, well, well. Okay, cool. So that's an easy one that we can definitely do. Um, but let's turn off the old radio here. All right, let's go finish uh, finding Nail so we can uh, ally ourselves with some super mutants. And hopefully I will find some chalk. Hopefully I didn't just destroy it all or turn it into other things. I may have donated it already. Oh, the... Uh, the old random bar out in the Commonwealth. Hello? Anybody here? Oh, I think we triggered that random encounter last episode. And there were actually people there, too. I need to build a bed. Yeah, I should build a cleaner bed instead of using the dirty mattress. That is a good idea. I should add that to my little... Uh, my little fort in the back of the screen. I started putting the water pump down. I'll do that next time we come back there. Build an actual squeaky clean bed. I'm carrying three 10 millimeter pistols. Oh no! All right. Well, I guess that's good trade fodder for the first next time we find a, another human to sell stuff to. What's going on over here? This looks like I'm about to get attacked. No. Okay. RNL34, so when are you going to be releasing some settlements for Skyrim? Are you going to release a version of Skyrim on some settlements? Uh, not anytime soon. Um, yeah, that would be a chore. That would be that would be a tough one. What's going on here? Is this a raider mourning the dead? Well, this feels dirty, but... Rival of the fittest out here, lady. All the gear. Man, that felt, uh, with the rain and everything, and me being by myself, like, I don't, and obviously I'm with you guys, but in, uh, 
in spirit, but in physicality here, I'm by myself. That was very, uh, it's a sad little moment there. Uh oh. Yeah, boy. All right. Yes, good. We do have the save mod on. Uh, I feel like this is going to go poorly. Okay, let's set up for this because <laughs> this thing's going to wreck me. Uh, what do we got in the yeah, bottle cap mine? Sure. All right, let's put that down up here. And let's tell dog meat to stay back. Psst, stay. Here. Over there. Come here, bear. Dog meat. Nope. Psst. Get into position. No, oh, I want you to stay. Hey, Where over is here. the stay button? Where'd the bear go? I don't like this. Dog mate. Hey. Let's uh, go. Uh, uh, uh. No. Get him. Ooh. Oh god. So little damage. <laughs> hey buddy, that's for you. That helped. Coming, doggo. All right, where'd that big dumb bear go? I'm gonna take him out before he recovers. Uh oh, did he already recover that fast? Or is that a second one? He's like, I went and found my, went and found my stim packs. Oh, mauled to death. Oh. Nope, there, there's the other one. <laughs> and that is why why we have the save mod on because that's gonna happen a lot to me all right then let's try that again I think uh, dog me this is your fault you didn't listen to my stay command stay Hold. thank you all right let's try this again let's get this all right we need a path where he can actually path to us that he can run across this Uh, come here, buddy. Over here. I, I laid a nice... Uh, the pathing. Okay. At least we got a couple of good shots on him. Oh, there he is. Hey, buddy. Nope. Oh, I destroyed myself. <laughs> Gonna need that death kill cam here. Mm. I need the death counter for the kill cam. Alright. Okay, so clearly he can path over here. So let's try that. Nope. Nope. That's not what I wanted. I forgot I didn't have an equip at that save. Alright. And you. Go there. Dog meat. Stay. Hold. Right. Come here, Mr. Yagwai. There he is. Missed. It's okay. Come here. Oh, see how angry he looks? No! Doggo, get him! Over there, get him! There we go. Every battle is an epic one. Oof. Okay, what do we need now? Let's see. What uh, what all is wrong with me now? I'm thirsty. Uh, and cheese, Christian. Okay, just thirsty, really. All right. 
Do we have any more purified water? We do. Okay. All right, there we go. Properly hydrated. Okay. All right, and now we've got a cheese, I think, and just <laughs> keep saving again, or we're going to be here for a week. So you can't really blame Nail for getting himself killed over here. Hey, buddy. Oh, that was a good hit. Okay, I don't think we did all that damage. I think he was already, like, at half health. He must have fought something else, because we're doing nothing to him. Look at this. That was not our doing, bringing him to half health. Uh-oh. Oh, nope, thought we were crashing there. No, nope, he's just getting out of there. And the level up for the full heal. I'll take it. Sonic Phil, thank you for the donation from Oscar Fry. KG, if you find survival too hard, add the mods campsite, simple wasteland camping, and HD sleeping bags and portable junk recycler. I'm getting two. Allow you to save and scrap in the field. All right. Well, thanks for that advice. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm trying to avoid mods as long as possible, just because uh, these saves are invaluable for me right now for bug hunting, because I know that any bug that we run into is our fault. Whereas, as soon as I install a lot of mods, uh, that no longer is the case. But, I do have... I did install a couple more add-on packs uh, today. I got... I added uh, jam pads, rags to riches, and scrappers. I think that's what Ono's is called. So I'm now up to, I believe, six add-on packs installed. I'll eventually collect most of them. I just, I just usually don't think to do it. And then today, uh, those three are our, uh, our HQ design team for Chapter 3. And we've been working a lot on getting some stuff ready lately. So I had them all on. All of them were on my mind today when I was preparing to stream. Those other rads, rag stags go, rag, rad stags go to. Okay, this is okay. I guess we can grab this element while we're down here. This one's easy enough, or at least we can get the quest to do it. And hopefully, we can, uh, I guess, dump some junk. I guess I'll just keep dumping my junk off in these settlements that we run across. All right, who's in charge around here? Welcome to Grey Garden, darling. This is the tiny Living, Chicken Coop, and Rabbit Hutch. Facility. Yeah, I'm sure I'll get Tiny Living soon. That's pretty ingenious. I bet you can work around the clock. Of course, darling. Our unique hierarchy allows for constant operation. You see, there are two kinds of robots here. The worker drones carry out labor and maintenance. We supervisors, that is myself, Green and brown possess sophisticated cognition processors. We are capable of complex analysis and decision making. A testament to the genius. All right, I, feel, I think we did this quest Dr. in the last playthrough, so I'm going to obviously I'm going to skip ahead brilliant. through all this. Thank well, you. Well, it's definitely unique. Uh, uh, a few, uh, mm -hmm. Seems fine to me. We won't skip over Jake talking, but uh -huh. we'll skip over the normal stuff. You guys have seen it. A all times. right. Uh -huh. Yep, yep, yep. Thank you, Supervisor White. There it is. Alright, let's add that to our list to do. Can we take anything? No. Okay. Alright, so now we need to head back to Concord. I was hoping that they had a water purifier, or a water pump here. Looks like they've just got a working sprinkler system that we cannot fill water bottles with. That could be a cool, a fun little micro mod someone could build in 10 minutes. Add like little activators to all these to fill water bottles. That'd be pretty cool. Alright, let's head up to... So I guess we go straight north. Yep. Off we go. <laughs> Did Nora just run out of memory? 
Nora ran out of patience. Oh man, I gotta pass through some dangerous territory here to get up to, uh, back up to Concord. So normally I, like, love running through these places to grab the map markers, since I can fast travel, but now I kind of want to, like, not get near them so that I have, uh, I can use it as kind of a checklist of, like, oh, I don't have the marker. map marker, I must have not cleared it. Arnold 34, will it be possible to have a settlement export the effects of recreational plots? A mini Vangus kind of thing. Export the effects of recreational plots. Um, so they kind of already do. Um, we have a under the hood. So there, there's a, a couple of under the hood see, um, mechanics that are happening for, for some settlements. And one of them is... Um, uh, and now I can't think of the name of it. What Because what, it's only in code. We don't have it revealed to you guys. Um, but it's effectively, uh, there's three pillars of influence that are recorded under the hood. And there's, it's, uh, um, ideological influence, military influence, and economic influence. Um, and those drive different features so that, um, the, uh, ideological influence is increased by having lots of recreational plots and that triggers more visitors to come, which increases your likelihood of getting the unique characters. Um, and then we also have, so there's like, there's this under the hood stuff we use for a few mechanics right now, and we'll continue to use them for more things in the future as we, as we keep fleshing out the mod with our infinite patches. Oh, I gotta try for the lucky pie. I don't know who's fighting over there, but they can't get in the way of my pie. Come on. And fail. Oh, we got a nightingale scan cash. Awesome. There's gotta be a way to fix this. Is there any any modders on here know how to fix this? Oh, it doesn't do it now, of course, because it's empty. Oh, I guess if I transfer something, I can. So if I put this in here, see when you open and close it, it like clips through that. Oh, I need to attach. We want to attach that to the lids of these caches without having to create a new model because we're trying to keep the number of uh, the number of new textures and stuff <clears throat> and meshes in the mod to a minimum for the sake of poor Xbox players. Hey there. Got some junk for you. I can rest easy knowing that Wolfgang is rotten in hell. Thank you. Hub flowers and stuff for recipes. You so I'm not really familiar with the recipes. What are what are the things? I'll start picking the flowers, but what are the things I can craft? Like, can I craft antibiotics? Because that would be probably a pretty big deal. To browse. Oh, oh well, got a nice brown face bug. That's fun. All right. So for, speaking of antibiotics, does she have any for sale? No, she just has some on her counter here, and she won't sell them to me. Uh... Okay, well, we're going to just sell the stuff we don't need here. Oh, wait, is this better than what I've got? It is. There's just a straight-up better sniper rifle in my inventory, and I'm not using it. Well, that feels pretty dumb. Oh, and I got some increased... Oh, man, I got to do some... I got to <laughs> I can figure myself out here. Let's see. Uh, we'll just go ahead and sell that. Let's, let's get my equipment upgraded here. All right, so let's... Uh, just take the straight upgrade. Oh, and I sold my... Oh, no, I didn't sell my double barrel. I just sold the one that was... Oh, that's weird. It happened... It didn't sell my extra ones. It sold my favorited ones first. That seems like a bug. Okay. Well, whatever. All right. What do we got here? So that's just a straight upgrade. Uh, da, 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 da. We can sell all those. Oops. Is this like a side grade here? Leather right leg, two and five. Nah, that's basically an upgrade. What do we have right now for, do we have glasses on? Yeah, are they both perception? Yeah, but the welding goggles seem cooler. I like, no, we're gonna give the, we gotta give the welding goggles to, uh, to Doggo. Where, where you at, buddy? Are you still fighting a Yagwai? Nope, I just heard your little pitter patter. Come here, come here. Hey, come here. I got something for you. Also, you got some stuff for me to sell. Thank you. And we'll give these to you. All right. And then we equip. Ta-da. Looking stylish, buddy. Okay. Now I think we can sell all this other stuff. Hi. Shop's open. What do you want? 
I want to steal I'll take your a look. antibiotics. Sure. All salvage. But nothing. Antibiotics still. need glowing fungus. Okay. You can make stems and everything with the right ingredients? Ah, okay. Grape Mentats. It gives plus five charisma. I don't know if you know how I feel about Grape Mentats. I, I, I share the sentiment of Monty Phylon. All right, we'll sell that thing. And that. Oh, I guess I could give him a bandana as well, but that's all right. All right, we'll take all your caps, lady. Seems like you've got nothing useful for me here. Is it worth using these things like the herbal stimulants and stuff? That seems like a lot of work to have to just train those for chain those for resistance. That seems like more work than I'm willing to do. All right, I guess we'll just take we'll take anything with some cloth. Uh, yep. So we can go donate and keep our. Oh yeah, we were we we're short on uh, asbestos for building um, residential too. Cloth and asbestos are what we're after right now, I think. Oh yeah, and I'm not I'm not paying for shipments. It's highway robbery. Okay, now we do quick save. Don't mind me. Come on, don't don't look at me. Hidden and doink. Huh. Quick, dog meat. She didn't see. Oh, nope, she did see. Ma. She did see. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think, I'm pretty sure in this game it just resets. Come here, dog meat. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Don't fight her. No, oh, he's fighting her. All right. I guess stealing is not as easy in this game as it was, as it is in Skyrim. All right, let's reload all this stuff for, so we're prepared for future combat. All right, oh, oh, it's got 10 rounds in it, okay. All right, where are we at now? Okay, here's Trudy over here, I guess we we'll talked to her too. It's gonna be loot, uh, bargaining simulator for today, as usual. Yes? Hello. Oh, Trudy, Carla, why, don't I, why did I call you Trudy? Hey there. Carla. So what's your story? Looking to trade, rob me, or just ask directions to Diamond City? <laughs> Diamond City? Where's that? Directions. Hmm, figures. Just keep going until you see the skyline. Cross the river. You'll find the Great Green Jewel just inside the city limits. Hey, Carla. Back again? Time to do business? I'll take a look, sure. Yeah, yeah, keep your shirt on. <laughs> Uh, all I really want is is stuff you don't have for me. So I guess I can buy ammo. Do I? What do I need? Three oh eight rounds. Jesus, four oh five. All right. Well, I gotta play this nonsense game of you take those and I'll take yours. Okay, good enough. All right. Off we go. If I kneel down and look at Dogme, he runs over to you. Hey, buddy. That feels like one of those things that might be just like a urban myth, like just a, a thing we're all we've convinced ourselves that happens. <laughs> like that doesn't sound like something with us would have programmed, but maybe they did. I know they spent a lot of they spent a lot of time with Dogme's AI because it's pretty impressive. <sighs> Thanks again for helping with the crate. Not at all, my child. But are you certain about the church? Sure, why not? I mean, it's not like anyone else is using it. Oh, may the Lord bless you for your kindness. Uh, okay then. Well, just let me know if you need anything. Excuse me. Howdy, darling. Good to see you again. Who was that again? Huh? Oh, you mean the fellow I was talking to. That's Edmund. Met him on the road from Olivia. Some kind of traveling preacher, I think. Nice guy. Helped me move the crate back here. He asked if I knew anywhere he could set up a church, so told him about the place across the road. 
Guess we're neighbors now. How are things going? Not bad, not bad. As you can see by the crate, I managed to get the comm hub back. Although it wasn't easy, let me tell you. I've got the hub inside if you'd like to see it. I'll take a look, sure. All right, follow me. Mm. It's true, all companions come to you when you crouch. Interesting. There it is. Ain't she a beaut? Although sadly not ready for service just yet. In fact, I couldn't even turn it on. But I have been able to give the old gal a good going over. Got a rough understanding of the hardware. Go ahead. I'm listening. Well, judging by the internals, this thing mostly appears to be a giant processor. My guess is that it operates as a kind of ASAM switchboard, connecting and communicating with the sensors. Which makes sense, really. I mean, it is called the comm hub. Now, if we could get sensors connected and communicating, that really would open up our options. Let us do some cool things. What do you mean by that? Well, for example, remote management, mass software updates, division of settlement labor, and the obvious one, better communications. Now, to you, that last thing may not sound like much, but trust me, better communications is something we want. So I think it's in our best interest to get this comm hub running. Really begin to rebuild the Commonwealth. I'm on board. When do we start? In order to get things going, first, we need to turn this thing on. And for that, we're gonna need some serious power. And I'm afraid my little generator just ain't gonna cut it. However, as luck would have it, just a couple of feet below us is all the power we could need. Go on. Concord has a municipal plutonium well. Probably used to power every building in town. To get some real power flowing again, all you need to do is turn it on. That is, if you wouldn't mind helping out. Nuclear power? That's a disaster <laughs> waiting to happen. Hey, don't worry about it. Folks have been powering stuff using old tech like for, well, hundreds of years now. Stuff back then was built to be sturdy. I don't think we got to worry none. I'm on it. It's as good as done. <laughs> I knew you'd help. You'll have to discover a way into the old service tunnels running under Concord. Once you're down there, find something that looks like a big old generator. Do what you need to start it up, then head on back. Okay. Uh, Oscar, that you know what we should do? It would be an amazing Easter egg. Oscar said, uh, the comm hub thing sounds interesting. The real question is, can it play a modded version of Skyrim on it? The, the the real meme would be can it play doom so how how sick would it be if we set it up so that if you activate this the screen comes on and, and uh it's got a little emulated doom on it <laughs> that would be so cool nobody i know knows how to do anything like that um would have to be uh somebody uh somebody who's who digs deep into the frc stuff Hello. all right more disease cures bye down we go. I think the ultimate can it run doom uh, happened recently. I'm pretty. I'm, I might be Mr. This might have been like faked, um, but somebody put together a. Um, uh, a Lego with a working little screen on it, and I think somebody put Doom on it <laughs> on a single Lego brick. That might it literally might have been faked though. It might have been one of those uh, quick Photoshop jobs. Oh, hello, hello, buddy. No, no. Oh God. Uh, no, where's the face? Give me the face! Oh, I don't have a good shot on it. Oh, I'm super dead. I mean, not. He's not swinging too fast. Oh, we got him with the stun! Go, 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 go! Woo! <laughs> the double arm break. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that icon. That's hilarious. All right, let's get that water. Get our water on. I really need to. I need to hotkey the purified water to get them noxious. All right, let's put this down here. There we go. 
All right, what can we get up there? Was this worth it to engage with that dumb thing? All right, come on. I know I can get up here. Come on. There it goes. Oh, look at all that sweet, sweet jet. Bingo. Oh, good, a new facial tattoo. That is right up this character's alley. Go nicely with the uh, with the bear claw scar. Give me all the loot. All right, let's go over here. We don't need to clear this whole dungeon. Just want your sugar bombs. What is that? Like a rat tail swinging around. Oh, just a little pistol. Oh, missed. Why can't I hit you? There it goes. How quickly can we fill up our inventory? Glad we missed this battle. And we get to just pick up the spoils. Hey, look at this. Look at this dummy. Whoa! He's got friends. Didn't expect the, the rad roaches. Now, I think there's a bunch of Meyer Lurk spawns in here, but I think they're also really easy to dodge. Like, I think the ambush triggers are set up in, in a, a little bit awkward spot where they don't always trigger. Oh, you guys said I need glowing fungus. Yeah, I think right over there. Yeah, there it is. I think you just ignore it. Just get over here. Hey, lots more glowing fungus. Okay, here we go. I was my in my head I was already going to the next time we come down here. Oh look at all this. Yes. And there's our over encumbered dog meat. Okay, let's try out your guys' thing. Stealth or uh, kneel down. Oh, I bet he can't get up here. Are you trapped, buddy? Come here. We got some junk for you. Alright, we'll drop some stuff. Alright, isn't there a way to sort by weight? Rate of fire, RNG, X value, sort by weight. There we go. Alright, drop you. And that did it. That's a heavy little bugger. Alright. Hey, and some more. No, I don't have time for lockpicking. Get out of here. Um. Oh, we need the cigarettes. I think the cigarettes have asbestos and cloth, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, let's kick the generator. Kick, kick. There it goes. And start her up. Okay. Head back up. Where is dog meat that at, though? I have a, hey, buddy, come here. I got a perfectly good laser musket you can pick up. Come here. Hey. Come here. Come get this. Wait, did it disappear? Aww. What a bummer. Alright. That's weird. I've never seen it, uh... Hey. uh take that, at least. No, I, I want you Over to take here. it. Not me. Not me. You. I've never seen it, uh, disappear stuff that quickly. Alright. Store you, store you, store you. As much as you can hold there for me. I can't get anymore. Okay. I'll well, give me a little bit of space. Up we go!
Loyal Leo Blade. I'm just starting my first playthrough of Some Settlements 2. Awesome. Well, I'm about to spoil some stuff because I'm uh, about midway through chapter one right now on this playthrough. Ooh, can we get to that medical box somehow? Can I do some parkour over here? Hmm. Probably can, but that's enough fooling around with that. Right, let's go. You guys have watched me waste enough time in my inventory and in the barter screens. Alright, let's do some red stag. Okay, good. Properly fed. Oh, I, do I still have the carry weight? Wait, what's going on there? Wait, so I ate it again and I lost the carry weight? That seems buggy. So the first time you eat it, you get the benefit, and then if you eat it again, you lose it? <laughs> that doesn't seem correct. Oh, the animation broke. Hold on a second. Do I have a save? Yeah, let's see if that if I can get that to work. Because if it, if it breaks again, then I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, report that over to Neher to get it fixed up. All right, which end? I think we came out this entrance over here. All right, let's see if this works this time. Yeah, it is. It's bugged from over here. That's weird. All right, I got to figure out what entrance that is. So I can uh, write that down on my bug list. So this is this is one of my favorite parts about streaming. We can find out all these little idiotic bugs that you guys probably run into that go either unreported or we don't have a good save to work from. And now we've got our this. I can use this save. So I'm gonna. I guess I'll just make a save right here. Um, let's see here. Save exiting here doesn't trigger. Conquered animation correctly. That is one hell of a save name. All right, let's go to the other exit and see if I can get this trigger. Or one of the other exits. Let's try this one. No, it could just be broken. It might be like we we um, rolled back some files or something. Yeah, it looks like the animation is just broken. Neher, if you're watching, we got to figure it out. I bet it has to do with um, re with uh, regenerating uh, anim text data. I bet that's kind of broken. But anyway, when you come out of the sewer, we have this like cool camera animation that shows us to show you the uh, the lights coming on in Concord. And instead, it's not playing right now. That's a bummer. Oh well. Hello, Jake. We're back. You should have all the power you need now. Yeah, I noticed. When the power came back, it blew out half the bulbs in here. Oh. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to replace those. But the important thing is, we now have power. You should have all the power you need now. Yeah, I noticed. Whoa. What just when happened the power there? came back, it blew out half the bulbs in here. It's gonna be a pain in the ass to replace those. But the important thing is, we now have power. So, the next step? The next step is, we try turning on the comm hub. All right then, let's try powering this thing up. Now let's see here. Oh, he's gonna do it. Dog meat uh, breaking scenes for us. Oh, I ain't here. Yeah, it's definitely okay, anim text data. Um... I gotta just let you generate it from now on. It, it almost, it's like 25% of the time it works for me. I think we're ready to give this a go. Uh, best if you stand back. 
<laughs> that gets me every time. Okay. I like how he just turns his back to it. Didn't exactly go to plan. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> to be honest, I was kind of worried this might happen. The hub's been sitting around the news for so long. And so many of its parts have degraded. Seems even with enough power, there's no getting around blowing out capacitors and pair of semiconductors. <laughs> Still, it's worth a try. I'm sure we can work this out. Give me a day or two. Maybe I can swap out some of the busted parts, clean a few tubes. It might be enough. I know it may not seem like it, but this was a step forward. Don't worry. I haven't lost faith in you. <laughs> Thanks. I appreciate that. Oh, wait, before you go. Here, take this. There we go, that's what we're waiting for. After all the trouble we've had with raiders, I started wondering if ASAMs could offer a solution. Now, I've not had the time to put some together myself. Been too busy with the comm hub. But what you have there are instructions on how to jury rig together a sort of defense plot. It's not very advanced, but should at least deter attacks from some of the small fry. Thank you. I'm sure that will come in handy. Technically, it's just a creative use of an ASAM program with an industrial plot. But by making the changes listed on that piece of paper, the ASAM should be able to guide someone to build something a little more... defensive. After that, it's just a matter of basic maintenance by whomever was assigned to it. Sounds good. I'm gonna be busy with the comm hub for a while, so I won't have time to demonstrate. But I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out yourself. Thanks for your help today. I'll put out a radio message again when I've got news. Take care out there. There we go. Alright, so now... Wait, why am I over encumbered again? What is happening here? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, probably because I'm peckish, so minus... No, endurance doesn't impact that. Did, did he hand me something? I'm very confused about what's going on here. Or did my rad stag meat just happen to wear off instantly? Alright, let's try. Oh, it's because... No, that's not it. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Alright. We're back in business. We got our, we got our carry weight back up. Okay. So now we can go back over to Red Rocket. And uh, build a jury rig defense plot here. Oh, hey, we left some we left some goodies. Oh, also, I think oh, we should go talk to Edmund too. But let's go let's go do Red Rock. We haven't done any settlement building yet in these some settlements. Let's play. We gotta do that first. Short win. Thank you for the donation. Have you been able to f uh, fix some of the confusion in headquarters when building rooms in Chapter 3? It's hard to explain, but it's very hard to know what rooms I actually need. Maybe I'm just dumb. <laughs> I know the... the Unfortunately, because the stupid uh, workshop icons spin, it's really hard to, like, use it as a map. Um, it was, like, one of those things where it was like, oh, this is going to be awesome when we... when we, And it sits still, and, like, we're looking at it um, in the 3D software, but then in reality, it's, like, really hard to see, to see what you're looking at it. So you kind of got to... Just learn to memorize all the spaces, but we are going to add an automatic mode where it's basically you just tell HQ, you know, just go ahead and build whatever you need, and then they'll just build the rooms for you. So that you, it's not going to be quite like a city plan. It'll be more like a, a semi-intelligent automated building. So you just just can send people to HQ and let them take care of all the construction. Like that will be a, a system we will have at some point. I don't know if we'll have it at launch for Chapter Three, but um, I'm going to try because I think that would be. Well, we're gonna, there's going to be a lot of big changes to HQ still. I'll just say that. Um, because we need to make sure that people who are coming in on a fresh playthrough don't have to grind out all of HQ in order to get the Chapter 3 story. Because the number of hours that would pass would probably just turn a lot of people off. Um, so we already have on our list, our to-do list, that we need to have some sort of uh, skip system available. Okay, so let's see. What can we do here? Let's dump off all of our crud in, our, in the workbench. Uh, actually, before that, we got to find our water pump so we can fill our water bottles. There we 
go. And dump all that. And we'll just get rid of all these two. All of my workbenches across the Commonwealth are going to be loaded up with goodies. And let's do some cooking. And then we'll actually sleep. A dirty wastelander. That doesn't sound great. Old world, old world recipe. Where are these coming from? Oh, I bet some of these are coming from uh, the add-on packs I have. Struggler's pie. <laughs> sure. Uh, tato latke. All right. Oh, it's using oil. Hey, hey, no, none of that. All right, here we go. How about any soup? Some noodle cups, yes please. Sugar bomb sugar. What is this for? What is the sugar for? Is this for is this for an add-on pack? This feels like this doesn't feel like a Bethesda thing. Because I don't think I have the donut thing, and I know they use stuff like this. Alright, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that alone for now. Alright, I think I need to dump some of the ridiculous amount of food I have in my inventory right now off. Transfer. I'm glad that there's not food spoiling in this, like, 76. Okay, let's see here. Let's get rid of all this, uh... All this stuff I'm not gonna eat. Oh my god, the inventory management driving me insane. Yeah, we'll eat some struggler's pie. Why not? Tarberry. I don't know what I'm what I need all what stuff I need and which stuff I don't. Alright, well we got a decent amount of weight. Alright, let's go sleep. We'll wake up. We'll do the thing. Alright, sleep. Here I think I, this one I can sleep for eight hours. Let's see. Let's test that. Alder Wiki, thank you for the donation. Love the SS2 community. So do I. They are fantastic. Um, especially proven last week when we did that live stream and everybody uh, came to the cause. God, that was funny. I cannot wait to do another one of those. I can't. I gotta like resist the urge to do it too frequently because I don't want to burn everybody out on it. I want it to be. So, I want it to be a special event when it happens. Um, let's see here. Now we get to do our morning ritual of of feasting. Let's do a noodle cup. Properly hydrated. All right. Okay. We have no debuffs. Just got a grilled red stag buff. Okay. Now we can finally, after all that, get to some some settlements. Let's do a save here. Let's see. We're on save. Uh, LP HC day four. We're at like mid session here. Mid session. There we go. And let's pop in. All right. So defense is our is our big problem here. Um, our happiness is still on the rise, but with defense, if we get proper defense, we'll we'll be fully uh, on the up and up here. So let's go to industrial. I said it's a jury rigged industrial, and get some of these built. Well, it's one of my favorite spots to stick one of these little guys is right over under this sign, kind of hanging out over the edge. Okay, city services. Municipal and martial plots require caps to maintain operations. You can raise additional funds for city services by building up commercial plots, ensuring settlers have everything they need to upgrade their homes so they pay more taxes. Um, so right now, do we have... No, my resource, my virtual resources are wrong. There's no way I'm at zero of everything. I just, I just need more time to update. Um, so let's get this... Let's change the... Actually, no, I like that. Uh, it's got the wood. No, that does. I want the wood, the wood stilts foundation. Uh, customize plot, and we'll do wood stilts. There we go. And we'll just let that build whatever it wants. Okay, let's pop back in workshop mode and see if our virtual resources have updated. Well, we don't need this yet, but I don't want to destroy it either. Come on, HUD. 
get with the program. We need that information. All right, let's try cycling it. There we go. Okay, what do we got here? So we have got lots of building materials, reasonable organic. Wow, wow, our machine parts are quite good. Um, part of the, so the reason our junk is kind of all over the place is because we've built a, quite a few of the junk gathering, which will ga gather just random amounts of everything. So you can just end up with like random spikes and different things. But we're doing pretty good there for um, for the network. Now let's see. What I want is the daily change to update so that I can uh, see how many days of... Um... Okay, so we're getting 48 caps a day. I want my daily change for the others to update so that I can see how many how many more days of cloth we have left. Now I'm not sure it's jam pads add on the sugar you use in some of the other recipes like the fancy teas. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, the pop-up uh, just mentions municipal. Yeah, at the so when we wrote up all those pop-ups, the um, the jury rig didn't exist yet, and so I don't want to have to pop up pop it up twice. So it's going to be just one of those little little flubs that has to stick around just for because I don't want to bother people again with it the same information. Come on, HUD, why you got to be like this? There it goes. <laughs> it's like a, the eggs workshop mode. It figured itself out. Okay, so we are we're losing thirteen or twelve cloth per day. So we've got twelve days left of cloth. So we're in pretty good shape there. Um, so do we have anybody not working? I don't think so. I think we need to kick on the thing again. And get some more folks in here. Okay, let's kick our recruitment beacon on. You know what I call a good day? Oh, One it is on. It is on. All right, so we're just waiting for for happiness at this point to kick in. Um, I guess we can do we can preemptive strike, and we have one bed, but it's I think it's counting. It's probably counting the bed I built for myself. Um, let's go ahead and get another residential in here in preparation. Oh, but now we got some some one buys because. And three by threes, because we have all these add-on packs installed. That's interesting. Oh, wait, one by ones we had last time, because I think I, I jammed two of them inside the building there. A three by three. I don't think I've ever seen anybody's three by three residential. Let's get one of these monsters out here. Get a big old house over here. I'm guessing the sports bunch wheel. They can live right in the middle of this bush. This feels like a perfect spot for a big family to live. I guess I'll do the one with the foundation. I'm gonna line it up with this foundation. Why not? Because that is a monster of a plot. There we go. We'll give them a cement pad. That'll feel right. We'll get this off your guys' property. Alright. Get in here. Customize plot. Change foundation. Concrete. Uh, no, I think we want we want a dirt terraformer. Yeah, let's get a dirt terraformer. Oh, we've also got some prawns here. What do we got? Floating floor, the warehouse floor, dead grass, forest floor. Dead grass might be correct for what's over here. We'll try that. We'll see how that works. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks like what the material is over here. Nothing says uh, wasteland living like a big pile of dead grass under your bed. All right, let's let that thing build up. Oh, I, oh no, I need people. <laughs> I need to, I have, I have no people, no building up. I need people. All right, but my next person's gonna be no. that little Marshall plot. We actually should probably do robots. another. We're gonna need because we're gonna need a lot of defense for this setup right now. So let's go ahead and preemptive strike. We'll get another one of these guys going. And turn, I think there's another spawn point back over in this corner. So we'll get prepared for that. Yeah, we'll build up on this little hill here. Can we get it just inside the... Give me some green. Give me some green, game. Beautiful. Alright, I'll we'll give them some stairs. Stairs. 
Oh, you don't want to clip? You don't want to s snap onto that? How about here? No? Oh, oh, I felt, I felt a snap for a second there. Snap points are such a pain in the butt to get right on these, on these, especially with because the plot's there too. I mean, these are some of these are a real nightmare. Oh, it works on that side. Interesting. Well then. Oh, you know what? We can we can cheese it like that. So we do. Uh, oh, I should have stored that. That was a mistake. All right. So we snap this on the side here, and then this, and now we can do. This here, can we lower it into the, well, we can lower it into the ground with, uh, oops, surface snap. Ta-da. Yeah, we'll leave those extra little platforms. They're not hurting anything. All right, here we go. So now we're prepared as soon as we get some, uh, some more settlers in here. And I'm trying to think, like, how much defense is that going to be? I have honestly I have no idea. I can look, actually I can look at the so if I want to see how much defense I'm gonna need, I can go check that and then I can kind of estimate roughly how much defense that's gonna be. All right, let's go to and actually I could probably just pull somebody off temporarily to build it just so we could get a feel for it. So let's go to reports here, needs report, and let's go down to defense. So we need 21. Oh yeah, two two uh, plots will definitely get us 21. So we'll be in we'll be in good shape. I think one will probably get us 21. Um, as long as they have a decent uh, agility, so we might have to juggle some people around as soon as we get another settler, but we'll Let that sit for now um, And then let's go start a second settlement. So um, I think gray garden because I have to do the quest not ideal um, I'm thinking what are some of the other settlements around here? I'm thinking Oberland might be a good one because it's just right across the way there not too far out um so let's go turn in, because we're going to need, well, I guess we don't need that many ASM sensors yet. So we can go turn in nail whenever we next head over there. So let's head on down to Grey Garden. So we're going to turn off this marker and put a new one right over here where Oberland is. And head on out. The farm's not much, but it's something. We did it! We won! We sure showed them. Who who did we who did we fight? Apparently they they had a battle while I was away, uh, or or we've got some dialogue seriously misconditioned. I will believe either. All right, what do we got here? Rifleman, that seems like a good one. We have anything else we could do? Sneak. I think Rifleman's going to be our go-to. We need some more damage because we are hitting pretty terribly right now. So let's do that. There we go. Especially since we just bought a whole bunch of 308. Deep Dive Gaming, I'm going to head to bed. Thanks for streaming. And uh, and again, great mod. Thank you for streaming. I know you're always putting out uh, new episodes. It's always fun to see see how deep you're taking things. Ha <laughs> the uh, With the series you got going. Monitor 42, it's not snapping because the plot is on top of the base. Move the plot, leave the foundation, it'll snap, it'll snap, the plot will snap back. Yeah. So it's one of those ones we I remember we spent a lot of time uh, worked with uh, I'm trying to remember who all I've worked with I've worked with Whisper I've worked with Pra I've worked with who else has tried so many of us have tried to to get the snapping so that it will work while the plot is on there and some some of the plots it does like I think the two by twos it works um, but not all of them it's super inconsistent Hangman's Alley best settlement I do like Hangman's Alley. Um, I do like Hangman's Alley, but uh, a little... I guess it's not that much further, is it? Hangman's Alley is like right over here somewhere. Not ideal for 2x2 two two plots, though. And I'm not really... I don't want to spend a lot of time like having to manufacture a uh, the scaffolding necessary. I really love Hangman's Alley for city plans. That's that's a fair place, but I'm not quite ready to use city plans. Um, just because they suddenly force me to... Oh, God. No, no. They suddenly forced me to like figure out a whole lot of daily resource expenses. Like I want to do it a little bit at a time so I can have a handle on it. There we go. Oh oh, you got oh you got buddies. Come on, bats! Come on, recharge that AP. Oh, I'll take that.
What are you doing, doggo? Oh, he's still over there. Got him. I don't know how. That was that was not a good good aim shot there. Looked like it was in between his legs. Skyways and Survival Hangman's has another benefit. Institute teleport in. And leave you can walk to Hangman's. Also has an interaction nearby vertebra uh, an intersection nearby vertebrates can land in. Interesting. It's been so long since I've actually played the main quest. <laughs> I don't remember if we haven't made it to the Institute in, uh... Alright, well, we can uh, take some pot shots. I don't know who they're fighting, but... Take out some gunner scum. Oh, they're fighting synths. <laughs> Get them, synth. We're gonna fight the winner. You out of here. That synth is kicking butt. And he's down an arm. It's like the Black Knight always triumphs. Alright, who else is out here fighting? Oh wait, was that the... Yep. The turret. Any other... Where's the other gunners? There's usually two or three of them over here. Who's doing all the fighting? Yep, there's somebody. Is that raider just fighting a rad stag? Yep. Oh no, feral, feral hounds. All right. Uh, where are you, buddy? feel obligated to kill, take as many cheap kills as I can, and collect as much loot as I can in survival. Is that is that the normal feeling everybody has, or is that just because I'm, uh, I'm still new to this? I think every every resource feels precious to me still, even though I'm I'm guessing it's not a whole lot different than regular Fallout where. Or uh, normal mode where most of this stuff is not particularly useful at the end of the day. Off we go. Nick Carter, when chapter three is finished, do you intend to play any mods like Fen's Sheriff's Department? Yeah, I got. Uh, there's quite a. I got quite a catalog of mods. I wouldn't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind playing. I also want to play through um, Fourville. This is one I've been meaning to play on camera. Um, wait, what's going on here? Who are you? Oh, this is the cat salesman, and he's got a little radio over there I gotta get away from so I don't have to fight copyright uh, idiots on YouTube. Hello. Hello, family. Hey. I think there are raiders nearby. <laughs> People are usually going, huh? Huh? Who? Oh, are there more gunners up there? Is that what that is? That is what it is. Bye bye. Can I get the other one? Oh, there's a turret up there too. I thought I could have sworn I saw one one more gunner running around up there. Come on, come to the edge.
Oh, oh, there he is. Or she is. Ah. Come here, come here. Peekaboo. All right, now where's that turret for good measure? Yeah, okay. Well, the turret can't get me, so off we go. All right, now I think we're back at the where I killed all the Yaogwai. I say I think we killed them all. Did we let one of them got away? Maybe. Well, he's not coming after us, so we're okay. It's hard not to have over here. Hard not to have flashbacks to Conqueror storyline. Took a long time. There's a, there's a quest we have rigged up over here. It took a very long time to get working. Goodbye, robots. We're not interested in clearing that water plant for you. I think the Overland folks don't want much from us. Although they might. They probably want a dungeon cleared or something. Hopefully one that we're going to just happen to be at anyway. Slow march. Oh, hey, buddy. You know, I'm surprisingly missing fast travel less than I'd expected. I thought I was going to be really irritated with the lack of fast travel. And I, I am a little just for um, for streaming because it's a whole lot of time of walking and then getting distracted with all the stuff that I'm getting distracted with. But <laughs> so far, it's not bothering me that much at all. Oh, man, I'm about to pop a level again. Hey, folks. Hey there. Am I ever glad to see you? We could really use a hand. Glad to help out. And what seems to be the problem? A pack of feral ghouls has wandered in nearby. It's too risky to have them so close, and we need someone to clear them out. Not Those a problem. Those I can handle. Those ghouls are as, as good as you didn't as say gone. super mutants. Well, it'll be good not to have to keep an eye under every College log Square. College scrap Square is pile. where. Is that over where um, the Brotherhood is? Well, it's close by, that's what that's for sure. Yeah, that we can okay, we'll go do that. Off we go. Oh, and um I just realized what we could do to get a bunch more settlers. I need to go get in Preston. I left him sitting there. There's five settlers right there. Send them off to Red Rocket. I'll go do that after we let's finish this. Let's get overland on our side. Because I do want to have two settlements going. Because I feel like uh, we haven't really, we haven't really dug in in too much into uh, the SS mechanics yet in this playthrough. I cannot read your name, but thank you for the donation. Uh, will your mods still work with the next gen update? I I assume that they will. Um, the mods we're not using any script extender stuff. Everything we're using works natively um, and so far we haven't had any indication that this is going to be an upgrade that's as big as um, uh, special edition was for Skyrim so you know we won't know until it happens but uh, I don't anticipate having to make any major changes because if they broke if they broke SS2 they would also break base game stuff um, and I have enough contacts now at, at Bethesda that if they if they did broke something significant enough for SS that could probably convince them to, to patch it and, and restore it to how it was. Just because we've got such a following of this mod, I don't think they would want to have uh, it broken. That may be hubris. That may be hubris. I may regret saying that, but um, I will certainly use everything in my arsenal to uh, make sure that SS2 works on the, on the next gen build because man the next gen especially I'm really hoping they that means they're bringing it up to DirectX 12 because oh my god would that be huge that would be so huge follow up for with, with DX12 would be a game changer 
city plans would be epic with with that. Even the the crazy Gavman and Carbach builds would work totally fine if we had the X12. Don't think that's what they're gonna do because that would be a lot of work. But one can dream. Yeah. Whoa. Guess I didn't need to use the crit there, but he spooked me. Oh, 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 I saw another guy. I feel like I gotta hit my weight limit any moment now. Oh, I got another disease. Hooray. Alright, let's take care of that. Antibiotics. Oh, man, I'm out again. Thirsty from lack of water, of course. And I'm hungry. Properly hydrated. Alright. What do I have that I can eat? What can I eat? Crispy squirrel bits. Mmm. Grilled rad roach. Now I'm properly fed. Alright. I guess we'll go help Paladin Bands. But first. Easy city downs. Cool. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, missed him. Nice work, dog mate. Anything else in here? Alright, where is... I hear the fighting. I'm just gonna track my way over there. There it is. Oh my god. Oh, when's the last time I saved? Oh, that's so painful. All the way back at Red Rocket. No. Oh, brutal. I hate you, survival mode. That's actually my own fault. There was I can't blame survival. That was just me not saving. Oh, painful. Did I even I don't even think I built. I think I've got to redo that building now, too. Okay, let's do it all over again. What a pain in the butt. Okay. Alright, this time we're not going to mess with We'll just leave the foundations how they are. Alright, get you over there. Yeah, got that. This one goes over here. I guess we'll just go do... We'll go get Preston and company right away. Oh, what a bummer. What a bummer on the Overland thing. That was so much lost progress. Come on. I want it to turn green. It just makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm not just place everywhere in my way through here. And it makes me feel like we built the meshes correctly when it works. Come on. You can do it. Get in there. We had it before. I'm sure of it. Oh, I wonder if I've got... Do I got surface snap off? Yep, that was why. And then of course, and then we did the stair thing. I gotta at least make an effort to auto, at least remember to save every time we leave a settlement so I don't have to redo the settlement work. Redoing combat, I'm okay with. Man, that was a lot of walking we uh, we did too. All right, then this. Come on, snap on there. There we go. And then we had a three by three res over here, I think. Big fat boy. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There we go. 
and don't have the patience to deal with the customized plot right now. Okay. Back on. Okay, let's head to Concord. Let's go back into the museum and talk to Preston and company. We'll send them over here. Instant five more settlers. Yeah, I have a save. I, well, I guess what I need is like an auto save mod that just like periodically auto saves for me so, since I don't remember half the time. So we'll go uh, pre Preston. Save that as. Wait, am I thirsty again? Oh, that's because I rolled back. Properly hydrated. There we go. Has Bethesda ever fixed bugs you've sent the reports on? No, but they also haven't patched since I've ever sent them bugs, so. Hopefully, well, I'm told that the bugs that I have submitted are on their tracker. And so when people are working on they said they're going to do bug fixes for for the uh, new release. So hopefully that uh, means whoever's working on the, the bugs sees my reports. Okay, so let's go get Preston. So we can also do, uh, we can also go talk to Edmund too while we're in here. Get easy, Mama. You okay? I'm fine, Preston. Quit fussing. Hey. That was a pretty amazing display. Preston Garvey, Commonwealth Minuteman. Everything's taken care of. You're safe. Thanks. It's good to meet someone who really cares. They've been just chilling anyway, here for about six days. We waiting figured for Concord me. would be a safe place to settle. Those raiders proved us wrong. Listen, and we owe you our lives. So here, it ain't much, but it's the best way I can say thank you. Before you leave, kid, a word about the journey you're about to start on, cause I seen your destiny. Is that autosave system in when you're in survival your mode? Is that available in the options? I should go check. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're gonna skip the vanilla stuff. Talked about. All right, let's check the settings. Is auto save available when I have this mod installed? Save on rest on. Save on wait. Save on travel. Save in pit boy. So I do have some amounts of auto saves on. This, that junk, it's gonna kill you. Oh, shush, Preston. We're all gonna die eventually. We're going to need the site. <laughs> You'll leave them in here until the Concord populates. And nobody bothered to check on them the whole time. Sanctuary awaits. All right, folks. Thanks to our friend here, it's safe to move out. We're heading for that place Mama Murphy knows about. Sanctuary. It's not far. She knows about it? You mean she had one of her visions while she was stoned out of her gourd? And now you want us to just head out on another wild goose chase based on no better plan than Mama Murphy saw it? It can oh, hardly hold turn on, out hold any on. worse than... Everybody just take it easy. We're all in this together, right? So Marcy, you got a better idea of what we should do? Oh, did you say my cooking also was, uh... Yeah, it was. That was pre, uh... Pre-save bummer. Alright. <laughs> we get to redo all that maintenance garbage. Uh, Alright, that's what we'll do. Um... All right, let's see here. Do I already have the quest to meet them? Uh, join Preston Garvey. Next. Okay, cool. I don't have to sit here and wait for this. They'll get there eventually. Anybody? And then we can recruit them. So let's go talk to Edmund, get his stuff rolling, so that we can start getting the quest, the, the people to show up here. I don't even know if I'm going to do all the Concord stuff, but the um, uh, I think I saw somebody earlier saying they hadn't seen Edmund in their playthroughs, and this was added in when Chapter Two launched. We added in a series of people who move into Concord as you play through so like each time you complete a main quest in ss2 it like unlocks another person to come move in throughout chapter one and so the blessed fathers the holy lords now the blessed father so the blessed father's light spoke through to the humbled man and said what would he say hmm oh hello my apologies i seem to have lost track of where i was i don't believe the two of us have formerly met my name is Edmund Callum. This your chapel here, Pastor? Yes, this chapel is mine in a sense, though it is open to all who would have need of it, including myself. Do you have need? 
What did you say? Ah, apologies. You stumbled upon me while I was reciting one of my sermons. Tell me, are you a religious sort? Yes, I am. Ah, then perhaps you'd be interested in joining us at one of our sermons. I think you'll find it enlightening. That yes, I am was so unbelievable. Go, Jake says you're the one to go to when things need doing, so to speak. I don't like running errands. No, no, nothing like that. I just wanted to officially touch base, since you're the de facto leader around here, even if you may not like to admit it. Okay? Care to elaborate? Well, you see, I've been walking the wasteland for a long time now. I've done my best to spread the gospel of the Blessed Father. I listen to the problems of the people, and I try to help as many as I can. It has earned me a number of grateful souls I consider to be my flock. I have heard more confessionals than you can imagine. I can tell you, I've seen a whole lot of places. There aren't too many you can find out there much safer than here. The efforts of you and the folks around is pretty darn unprecedented, to put it mildly. What's your angle? Oh, my background is not important, my child. My story begins, as it does for so many, when I found the word of the Blessed Father. The man I was before just wasn't cutting it. Finding the Bible, spreading his message, it changed my life and the lives of countless others. The Lord made me an offer I could not refuse. Once it becomes known amongst my flock that I have found a safe church here in which to hold my sermons, many of them will most likely make their way here as well. I'll keep an eye out. Please do. It will be for the betterment of us all, Lord Will. I'm not sure what causes that One occasionally with the when you choose an option and the other NPC immediately starts talking. It's very inconsistent. Oh, no. Like a graveyard. I didn't notice one around. When folks die of sickness and other things, they tend to come to the pastor if there's one around. At least from my experience. What was that about people getting sick? The wasteland is a harsh and dangerous place, my child. If it isn't raiders or super mutants, it's radiation and rad scorpions. And with the limited medical oh, is that my shame level up that from that I chose about, the rifleman on? It's just as easy to get a disease from drinking water as it is from a mole rat bite. It's a good thing to think about these sorts of things, is all I'm saying. Thanks. I always appreciate good advice. And I always appreciate a chance to give it. You really should come by sometimes and catch a sermon or two. Even if you aren't a believer, I'm sure you will find something of use out of them. And if you don't mind me being a little selfish, it would be a great thing for my flock. Their courage will grow by wonders to see someone out there making a difference, one way or the other. And perhaps you can lend a helping hand or two as well. It won't go unnoticed. I will keep you no longer. Go free, my child. Thanks, Pastor. Okay, let's see. What do we... I think it's check the community board and then the sermon. Yeah, check the community board right over here. And I think... Yep, missing carabiners. All right. There we go. So now we've got uh, the... Why can't I think of his name? can see his head in my or see his name in my head or see his face in my head oh what do we get here mama's place single person home that is a that's quite some place mama murphy that gave me extreme uh merman to anubia vibes so i think that was from them but maybe i'm wrong uh let's see Brannigan, that's who it is that's what i was thinking of um, okay, let's head over to Sanctuary, I guess, and see if they made it. Sean, is there a way to tone down how many gunners spawn when, uh, when settlement take over? Uh, there is not. Um, I don't remember what it's tied, it's tied to something, it's, there's, um, it's not just unlimited, and it's, uh, I can't remember if it's, like, the num the more settlements you control, the more gunners respawn during that, that, ser that part of the quest. I mean, you can, you can shut them all down completely by just, uh, moving forward with the main quest. What are these folks? Oh, they took that route? I've never seen that. Usually they walk the road. Alright. Uh, 
Oh, the gunner's beating you there and turn off your turrets. Yeah, that's that's like by design. That's that quest is supposed that part of the quest um, is basically supposed to give you kind of an existential threat and put pressure on you to actually proceed with the story. So that it's like not that you have to do it. It's just kind of like a um, uh, to make the gunners feel like they're a threat. Like the gunners are actually pissing you off. And I think it works because I think I, I have yet to find anybody who's like oh the gunners aren't such bad folks at that point in the quest everyone's like i cannot wait to i just want to murder all of these guys so they stop um which was the intent okay why is the marker on there i guess it's just kind of like we'll just chill here and wait for preston to show up I can't remember if we can immediately send Preston and company out or if we have to complete Sturgis's quest first. I know Preston just kind of wanders, but... And there's like a brief window where you can send Mama or you can move Mama Murphy and assign her and stuff. Maybe I'm wrong about them moving her. I know she get once she gets her chair, she's just she's just stuck, but I think before then... We'll just run around loot while we wait for them to show up. Did I get, did I get your special or not? Oh, I know what else we can do. We can go do that cooking again. Wait, did I already build? I did build a nice bed here. Okay. Oh, peckish from lack of food again. All right, now there's a cooking thing, I think, over here. All right, there's June. Mama Murphy. You guys lost Preston. Many a players would like to know your secret. Oh no, the cooking seems to be done. I don't I can't see any other uh, stuff, so that's good. Come on. Any day now, Preston. We never killed these. That's shocking. Good job, dog meat. All right, and then I think there's like, uh, is this the house with the bomb in it? No, that's somewhere else. Ooh, free stim packs. Yes, please. Mmm. Double egg. Oh, we can do the perk. Let's see, is this? Yeah, I lost out on that. Yeah, I feel like before, I think we were like just about to hit. Man, I lost a lot there. We were about to hit level 13. Oh, there's Preston. Um, before that happened. I think right before I got to o uh, Oberlin, my XP bar was almost filled up because of all the random encounters we had on the way. Hi. I'm glad you decided to come with us. I should have listened to Mama Murphy all along. Pretty nice place she's found for us. I think we could settle down here. Make it a place to call home. What do you think? I don't know. It's strange being back here. What do you mean? You used to live here or something? I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what's true anymore. Hey, it's okay. I don't mean to rile you up. We've all got our past to deal with. No shame in that. Anyway, I am glad you're here. <laughs> and I hope you don't mind. But I've got another favor to ask. I've had word oh, from man. a settlement asking for help. Preston broke. They're still hoping His brain broke trying to find a settlement. Like, oh god, Somewhere. did the only chance to Did start they already save all the settlements? Is to show people that they can count on us when they need us. Trouble is, I've got my hands full here. Do you think you could go help out the settlement? <laughs> oh, good. I was hoping for a chance to rescue some more helpless villagers. It's not that people are helpless. <laughs> nice. They just need someone to give them a helping hand sometimes. That's what the Minutemen are supposed to be all about. By well, the way, made up for that lost level. Home, talk to Sturgis. Look at how much, that's ridiculous sure how much XP. <laughs> Two full levels for talking to Preston. <laughs> oh, that's dumb. I see why some people save scum that and just uh, try and, like, every quest turn in to try and get the trigger. Because that is fun, this early game, to get that many. 
All right, well, what are we? Who are we trying to save? The Ten Pines Bluff settlers. Okay. All right, that's a that's a mighty hike. All right, I'm gonna quickly check and see if I can send any of these guys over to Red Rocket, or if they're gonna make me do their little quest first. Let's get into workshop mode here. Sturgis, move. I can move them. Okay. You go to Red Rocket. But you, I'll send your whole little family with you. Don't worry. Oh, Marcy's stuck here. Okay. How about you? Yep, she's stuck here. So only Sturgis. I can send Sturgis anywhere, but those three want to stay here with Pre with Preston. Well, that's somebody at least. Yeah, dump my crap and cook before I leave. Yes, indeed. Uh, I'm gonna head over here. I thought I think we're gonna we're gonna uh, wind down the play section here and get over to to chat mode. So if anybody's got any uh, thing they want me to show them in the mod or some burning questions, we're gonna I'm gonna shift gears and quit dinking around with. Uh, oh, I built a bunch of residential on the roof already. I forgot about that. Um, shift gears to just hanging out and chatting for a while soon. Just want to uh, get things in a good place here. If you work, you eat. It's as simple as that. So, Sturgis can live up on the roof here. All right. And then that means I guess he's going to end up assigned to one of our new uh, jury rig plots. But I feel like he. I actually should probably. Well, that might give Hope us a good amount of defense. Let's see how much defense we get out of this. Because actually, he's going to have super stats because all of Bethesda's. Uh, NPCs have just insane stats. They didn't balance them at all. Definitely some sort of disease going around here. I guess I have a lot of disease cures. We're in some real trouble here. I hope you can help. Oh. No? You don't... <laughs> I just need to trade gear with you. I thought he had a, I thought he had a quest for me. No thanks. Okay. Alright, let's see. What is... How much defense you got for me? 25, perfect. So that should put us at 10 caps a day. Uh, I don't. We're not making that many caps right now. We got 200 in surplus, so that's 20 days. So we have, we're more likely to run out of cloth before we run out of uh, caps, so that's good. Uh, but that puts all of our needs all full now. Beautiful. Getting close to the build limit. I might just raise that up just in case. Um, all right. Let's see, and I think we we put a generator on this, excuse me, on this guy, because we're hoping for this guy to level up. Let's see here. New details. What are we at? Just the level one. All right. Not enough time's probably passed. But now that we've met, now that we've got defense needs met, this thing has a chance to proc soon. Um, and once this levels up to level two, I think is when we unlock, is when we get organic materials. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go clean out our inventory again. Okay, we're good there. Oh, we don't have much because I think we did all of our looting during that section when I got wrecked. I can store all my junk, I guess. Actually, what I should be, I should be donating a lot of this junk, but. They seem to be doing pretty good on, on uh, junk collection right now, because I went hardcore on industrial. Okay, I think we're in a good spot here. So we're just waiting for uh, Sturgis to show up and uh, man his plot. And I think we'll just leave him on like the 25 defense. I, I can't remember what the baseline is, but... Uh, oh, did this thing get built too? Do we have two extra settlers here? Yes, it did. So how much how much defense do we have right now? 72. Who's our other one? Oh, we must have triggered. We must have just got a random extra settler. So now we have too much defense. Well, that's cool. Um, all right. Well, then let's go ahead and build. Let's see. Our food's good. So let's just build another industrial just to get that stuff cranking. And then we'll shift it. We'll switch it over to a um, organic when, once it builds. So because I thought we were going to need two marshal, but we don't actually yet. So let's get another... Um, get another one here. Come on, enough with the object snap. Or how about we turn service snap on, object snap off. 
I'll just stick it right in here. Yeah. And we'll make this one uh, just a ra random junk for now. Just to collect massive amounts of stuff. Choose building plan. Junk gathering. And then we'll find out whoever is over. Uh, junk gathering. Keep something Yes, That's weird. That shouldn't have come up. Um, I gotta go. Th I gotta remember to go through and purge all those extra messages that don't add any value, because there was nothing for me to learn there. Um, okay, let's do track occupants. Figure out who lives here, and it is this new settler. Who? Oh, I see. So the the spawn point in Red Rocket is right here. So I'm blocking people by building the stairs right there. So I guess we'll scrap this dumpster so people have a chance to get out of there. All right, you are gonna be, you're gonna come work this plot instead. Come here. Are you still trapped, lady? Oh no, she's waiting to assign. Let's wait till that updates and then we'll uh, decide if we need to remove our, move our stairs somewhere else so that people can actually path in here. Still says junk. Nope, now, there was the sure. That was quite the delayed reaction. All right, defense dropped down, but we're, we should still be full, which will help a lot with our happiness. Our happiness trajectory should be really good now. Like we should be on trajectory to get, because that, that's going to be the number one limiter for our plot upgrades. Is you got to have at least uh, 70, 70 happiness. Yeah, seventy happiness to get to level two. Yeah, she seems just full on stuck on the pathing. Path so let's reorganize this a little bit. Let's do. Make, let's just, oh, I got object snap off. Put that back on. Right, let's see here. Can we snap it this way? Oh, I guess we don't want that anymore. Uh, oh, I see why we had that. But now there's going to be... Okay, well, let's see, how are we going to path up there? This is no good here. <laughs> Sturgis was on his way to home, and, and uh, we just took away his, his entry point. Okay. Oh, and now is that settler moving all of a sudden? Suddenly she figured it out after we destroyed our, our nice little setup here. All right, let's try it. Let's put that back. Sturgis was ready to go. So I guess I don't need, I had a another floor piece there, but I guess it's not necessary, but I'll put it back anyway. All right, let's put this guy right here, there we go. Always good to see them pathing up on that roof. This always feels, getting vertical pathing in this game feels like you like you won the lottery. Okay, we've got, uh, let's see, there's this thing finished building over here. It did. All right, let's do a quick, uh, let's do a save, and then we'll do a sleep and see if we get, say, so this is theoretically end of session, but if I happen to get the, the upgrade to pop, we'll, we'll play a little bit longer. Uh, end of session. Let's go sleep and see what happens here. I hate to have to, hate to do the sleep right in the middle of the day like this, but I, I can we sleep for more than eight hours? Let's see what happens on a nice clean mattress. Can we just sleep until tomorrow morning? Yeah, I think we can do, um, I wonder if we can do Sturgis's quest line here or if it's gonna like give us the objectives back in. Uh, hey, we got a good night's sleep, but now we're hungry and thirsty. Um, I wonder if we can do his quest line here or if, we have to, or if he's gonna tell us to go back to, go back to Sanctuary to do it, let's see. We need food, properly fed. Where is our purified water? Properly hydrated. Do we have any more water bottles? Hey, easy living. We do not. This ain't. Okay. All right, let's see. Is this thing ready to go? Because I think I... Did I turn off automatic upgrades? I feel like I did. If I didn't, I, I need to. Automatic upgrades are a good way to get wrecked in uh, hardcore mode until you get late game. 
All right, let's go Sim Settlements 2 gameplay. Go down to upgrades. Uh, auto upgrade is off. Okay, cool. Okay, so this one's not quite ready yet. So I think this will be our. Uh, we will we'll save again just because we're post sleep, and then we're gonna go to our normal setup for chat time. So we'll go set game hour to eleven. Force weather to a. Set time scale to zero point one and put on god mode so I don't get killed. And let's make dog meat stay over there. Hey, head over there. No, stay. Wait there. Okay, and then we go to TFC, TM. There we go. All right, ready. So if you, if you guys want to uh, hang out and talk for a while, I'm gonna just leave myself floating up here in case, in case anybody needs me to show them anything in game. We can watch settlers wander around. And dog meat just stare at us. Wondering what's up, where our next command's coming from. Uh, just sure to be sure to do an at King Gaff if you guys want to ask questions. I'll talk about uh, anything live. I'll talk some about Chapter Three, but not a ton. I'm not going to spoil anything story wise. I'm the uh, I'm pretty much an open book on most of the mechanics because I'm been uh, talking about how they uh, or I've, I've mentioned that we're basically porting um, the Conqueror mechanics forward, and that's going to be the the primary new stuff coming in Chapter Three mechanics wise but we are enhancing everything trying to make it more streamlined so i like to say for for chapter three's mechanics we're, we're giving them the same over the same overhaul to the conquer mechanics that we did to the plot mechanics between ss1 and ss2 ah that was a good session though it's such a bummer that i lost out on the uh uh all that um xp and progress on the way over to overland but made up for it with that with that quest turn in idiot savant proc that was real nice. I'm about to hit the build limit. Oh yeah, I should have uh, upped that before I forget. But I think I have... I, I may have ignore build limit on. I probably should just turn that on too. But too late, we're already at end of session. If nobody has anything to talk about, soon I might pop back in and do that and, and resave. But for now... I hate to. Re I don't like to resave when uh, once I've skipped time though. Because that's like cheating. Especially in survival mode. Like skipping the time um, is a bit of a cheat. Less of a problem in when we're playing in non non survival, then it's kind of doesn't matter that much. I'm only about halfway through my second coffee. I got a lot of night left in me. If you guys if you guys uh, have nothing to talk about, I will. Uh, I probably start uh, start working on chapter three again. That's how how energized I am right now. I was a little worried I was going to end up with a with a flu or something. Um, one of my kids has been uh, has been sick for the last four days, and then my wife's starting to get it. So I feel like I'm I'm on deck. <laughs> Kid, I'm gonna be hit hit soon, but I've been cramming vitamin C down like it's my job, hoping to uh, and and kind of keeping away from them as much as I can. Um, but that's kind of hard to do. Let's see, bad pumpkin. Did you uh, did you see the bug I posted earlier about Stodge? I'll be honest, I am way behind on the forums. Um, way, 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 way behind. I have not visited the forums, uh, like other than to post stuff myself in ages. Um, and uh, that is just I'm I'm I, I haven't answered my messages anywhere either on Nexus on the forums. My messages are way far behind. I think the only thing I'm caught up on right now is Patreon and email. I'm kind of at the at this point like um a any bug reports I kind of wait for them to go through somebody who has already been vetted and knows our process for confirming bugs and then they post them to our internal bug log uh, cuz investigating all the bug reports on the forums becomes kind of like a an endless job uh, that I can't do by myself. If you guys also want me to make progress on stuff. So I have not seen it but um Hopefully, somebody who is in the know has. Yogi, did you get the personal guard mechanic from Conk Ported Over for Chapter 3? Not yet. Um, that's one of those ones on that I put on the stretch goal list because it has some it has some flaws to it. Like, it was really fun um, during the big battles and outside, but it's really clunky when you're inside, and it breaks quests like crazy. So, it's one of those ones where it might end up being patched in later when I have a chance to, like 
really give it the deep deep dive of like okay what what can we change about this like maybe it'll be something like they only work with they only follow you around while you're outside and not in interiors or um something or maybe like during quests they all get disabled temporarily i, I gotta figure out some ways to like make that system work better because it was fun being able to just take anybody with you and because with the the ss2 take on the mechanics you're not limited to who your soldiers can be they're not just generic meat bags now you can make anybody one so you can kind of basically make pseudo companions out of virtually anybody um with the squad system if we bring that back so like i have the code rigged up like i have placeholders for it like i have a system called squad manager already in preparation one of the other things that i wanted to do with uh chapter three and, and another reason that the personal guard system got pushed to uh, put on the back burner is because i always had this idea of it would be really cool if you could have multiple squads you could control where like imagine um you could set up like little sub teams for your for your raids where it was like alpha team bravo team charlie team and you could give them individual commands easily like something like that as opposed to just your personal guards and use that same system so anybody who doesn't know what i'm talking about there was a in, in conqueror there's a personal guard system basically you can take any of your your soldiers which were basically your settlers by another name um and you could have them follow you around and act as companions and they would gain experience and rank up they would help you loot um and there was this system we had where you could issue the same way you issue dog meat commands, you could issue the whole squad a command at once, like go attack this thing or, or move here or whatever. Um, and I, I always like the idea of like trying to figure out a way to have it so that you could have multiple command squads. And then the ultimate version of it, and this is also on my wish list for, for features post-launch for chapter three, um, is like an aerial command mode where instead of being down in in the battle if you wanted you could be like up in the sky just issuing commands i thought that would be really cool but making it in such a way that it's not janky and also not overpowered is what i got to figure out the balance for so it's like to me it's kind of going to be one of those like hq 2.0 level patches of where it's just like i need to do an extreme deep dive put in dozens of hours on tinkering with it and then that'll make it into a patch but right now we're so like we are i already did that so many times with so many systems like like i said earlier in the stream we were planning on launching chapter three in october and now it's uh uh it's already april and we still don't have an end in sight quite yet so it's like this is going to be a two-year dev cycle or, or close to a two-year dev cycle which is you know not normal for us like we usually like this is the last year was the first year we didn't release something um other than that we released the mega pack of city plans but um that's not the same level of thing that we're used to releasing so this is uh we're already in way deeper than i, I anticipated so i had to I've, I've gotten started putting things as like um stretch goals slash post-launch content because i, I don't anticipate even when starfield comes out i'm not going away i, I anticipate i'll be after we release chapter three, I anticipate I'll have one year of heavily active development still, and then another year after that of, of uh, periodic bug fixes before before I'm retired from Fallout 4. Nezzy, holy cow, with the huge donation, 99 99 I missed the stream last week, but seriously, when will we get some sweet, sweet Theron merch, please? Um, yeah, we have, so... Um, uh, uh, I'm trying... I'm trying to think what what she goes by now. General Elaine, Elaine, um, uh, I think that's what her forum name is. Yeah. Eric Ember Studios um, has created us really beautiful icons of most of the Sim Solomon's two characters. Let me show you guys the uh, the thing. Hold on, just a second. Let me bring up the Threadless page. So if you go to simsettlements.threadless.com, we recently launched. I can bring it up here and put it on stream. Whoop, 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 whoop. No, no, no. Oh, I hate when I have all these windows open. Um, okay, there we go. So you can see we've got these really cool cartoon icons for Jake and Aiden. We do have one for the Ron as well. We have some for a few other characters. Um, my plan is to rotate them periodically. Like, I'll probably always have Jake and Aiden up, and then I'll probably start rotating some, like, other characters. So maybe the Ron will be up next, just for you, Nezzy. Um, I do have we do have a bunch of them, but I thought it'd be something more fun if we just had them periodically pop up new characters so people who've been waiting for their favorites get a chance for it. We just haven't I just haven't had a lot of time to like sit down and think about marketing stuff because I am it is it's 
is so hard for me to accept that we are not going to have a release after a year. Like it's like, I'm, so every moment I have right now, other than the streaming time, I just want to grind. Like, it's just like, let's get chapter three out there. It's, uh, um, but there's just so much to do. And so like finding even like little stuff like that, like we have, um, we've been doing the easy mode. Let's play like the, the rent, the, uh, edited version of them. And we also, when, when working on that, discuss doing like shorts for YouTube shorts, just to, cause like all this stuff, you know, it helps with getting, um, it helps getting more eyeballs on the mod and the more people who are interested in the mod, the more support we get and the more we can do. Um, so it's useful, but I just, man, I just can't even find the time to, to commit to that. So like we started developing shorts and stuff and then I was just like, I don't, I don't have time to focus on it. I don't have time to think about like when the release schedule is going to be or uh, what our plan is for them. We swear we could use, we, we almost have like a little, we have like a little nonprofit going here <laughs> because there's just like a whole, there's a whole business worth of work to do um, in managing the mod in the community and uh, uh, we don't have enough people to do it. And all I want to do is develop. I just want to, I want to code every day and, and get this stuff moving. We're heavily working on uh, the quest line for chapter three right now, which is super exciting, especially because most of the voices are all recorded. So it's like we get to, at this stage, as we implement it, we get to hear hear it all and um, start putting together. But some of our quests are super complicated, so it's um, it's, a, it's a big thing. Anyway, all that all that rambling to say, yes, I will get you Ron merch soon. Um, it's been just a I've just been distracted, so. Oscar Fry, can we see you work on chapter three code for the rest of the stream? <laughs> no, uh, that there will be too much of a too much of a chance of me revealing story stuff because most of the uh, chapter three code I'm working on now is like polish level stuff. Like we're most of the mechanics now are done um, at a high level. It's mostly like just polishing things up, tightening things up, and then working on stuff people need for quest moments. Like there's just, there's a lot of stuff where it's like uh, either folks don't know how to do it or we're like oh we should systemize this and make it so that we can reuse it or or make it uh, you know tie into an existing mechanic as opposed to you know hacking it for the quest. Take a look at Minutemen squads. Is that a is that a mod out there? What kind of stuff does it do? Uh, oh, I missed a, a message up above. Uh, Cosmonaut, ow, I think you obviously don't know, but do you think they might fix the power grid bug and follow up for a next gen update? I mean, I was told by by some people there that they have all of the information I've given them on that bug on their tracker, and so when their programmers get to bug fixing, like they know about it. So whether or not they fix it is tough to say. The biggest reason I the, the reason I think they might not fix it is because reproduction is so hard. So like as a programmer. And everybody who has access to the GitHub for SS2 knows that one of the things I absolutely requ request from them is reproduction steps or a save that has the issue that has no mods on it. And we haven't been able to do that for the power grid bug. And, you know, that idea of reproduction steps, that's not me. That's not just a me thing. That's that's most developers want that. Um, and so Bethesda's developers are going to be no different. So if, like, somebody can come up with a way, guaranteed way to trigger the power bug on a vanilla save or has a vanilla save with it in play, like that could almost guarantee we get the fix. But without that, it's like, it's basically a matter of, um, you know, does the right programmer at Bethesda who happens to know the power grid code understand the problem? Like we've given them a lot of details because fortunately we've had some really smart people out there look into this problem. And so we know exactly what causes it. And it's just gonna be, it's gonna be kind of like luck of the draw. And this is the same thing with like a lot of, but you know, you guys, I can give you guys a localized example within some settlements. You know, sometimes the bugs you guys report, it's just kind of luck of the draw if they get fixed. Of like, do I happen to see it, and am I in the headspace to remember how all that stuff is rigged up to where I like, oh, I know exactly why this bug is happening. Like sometimes that's the the, the requirement to get a bug fixed. And uh, I again, I don't think it'll be any different than with this. So all these Fallout Four bugs that we report. Whether they get fixed, I don't think it's just going to guaranteed be a matter of did Bethesda see it. Sometimes it's going to just be like they can't reproduce it regularly, and so they're not going to do it. Um, and then another time it might be like somebody who's really familiar with the code happens to get that bug on their table, and then they're just like, and then they find the solution in a couple of hours, and we get it. So it's hard. It's really hard to guess. I I hope like to me that's the um, if they could fix get eliminate the power grid bug, 
and get us to DirectX 12, I think this game would be just in perfect condition. Because like without the with DX12, you get way more draw calls, which draw calls are like the number of textures you can render on, on the screen at once. So we would basically be able to, like you could build forever in your settlement and you would never cause the stuttering that you do right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then without the power grid bug, you'd eliminate most crashes. I think the other thing that, I think the next most common thing that seems to cause crashes is uh, that Bethesda would be nice if they could fix, but I don't know if they could, would be pathing bugs. I see a lot of, in people's um, buff out logs that uh, the issue is animation slash pathing related. That one would be nice to get fixed, but I will accept the power grid bug going away. Because at least the, the animation and nav mesh bugs, those tend to be like just flukes. So you can just like reload the next time, your save the next time it won't happen. Whereas like the power grid corruption is, is almost guaranteed. All I, from what I've heard from people is that the power grid one we've mostly resolved with workshop framework if you've got FRSE. So for PC users, it's mostly gone. Oh, I missed one from Yagi. Did you get the... Per oh, no, that was the personal guard. Yeah, we talked about that in depth. Uh, I, I really hope to get... I do really hope to get the personal guard stuff brought forward again. I think it was a lot of fun. Foxfire, yes, it is. And you can have up to three squads to send on Preston's quest, and one of them can come with you. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, the, the Preston, like the doing quests for you thing, like we have, that's what HQ, that's something we have in HQ right now. Um, that would be where we would implement that as opposed to Minutemen squads or like individual squads. The squads that, that I set up in Conqueror that I'd like to pour for would be specifically for big combat encounters. So I could be like, you guys go left, you guys go right, you guys go up the middle. Uh, but I think the only way that really would be effective is if, you, if we had aerial control. One of the problems I have with the aerial stuff, like, you know, we have the um, Workshop Plus, the flying mode, is that it's really hacky um, because you're you're using still the first person controls of like moving forward. What we really need is, I, I, what I'm told, and I actually should go pop in and check it out, um, is that Fallout 76 now has, um, has free cam building. And like what you really want particularly on a controller, is you want to be locked on the Z-axis, which would be like you're up down. So like when I move forward, instead of it moving me closer, I want it to move me like up, like up. So if like my camera's pointing like this and I push up on my controller, I want to move toward that power pole. Like that would feel better, especially, and the same thing for, um, for doing like RTS style command. I want that kind of camera motion and we can't get that uh, with the flight we can pull off in Fallout 4. Like you can kind of pull it off if you go, if you strafe instead. Um, but then going forward, having it zoom in just feels really janky. Like I want to lock the Z axis so that I don't ever move. I don't ever zoom in and then have like a second key, like maybe do, uh, L1, R1 to, to, uh, go up and down. And I think that's what I'm told, uh, 76 works like, like if we could have that, man, that would be amazing. We're not going to get it, but I could dream. I guess we could get it technically. Somebody could put it in with FRC. Arissa, any news or thoughts about Starfield? Um, no, nothing nothing new that I'm aware of. Like, I know that uh, uh, Juice had posted a video yesterday, I think, or maybe today, about uh, leaks from Starfield, but I tend to ignore the, the leak videos. They're pretty uh, unreliable, so I haven't watched it, so I don't know if there was anything juicy in there or not, or maybe uh, something from a... a proven leaker. I know there's a few leakers out there who've been fairly accurate where you can kind of trust their stuff, but I mean, we're not that, like June's not that far away. We're going to get the deep dive in June and then we'll know all about it. And then that's when the hype train can really start. And I imagine they'll start doing, um, leading up to that, like in the next couple of weeks. I mean, basically once, once Redfall launches, which I think is in early May, right? After that happens, then they'll be free to start marketing, uh, Starfield more. And we'll start getting more of those like little insider videos and stuff with more information on them. And then and I can geek out on that stuff. Mod Hunter Fortress, you're still up for coding tonight, eh? How about speed modding and nuke mod early? <laughs> Nothing like that. The speed modding um, works real. The the doing the the quests for speed modding works really well because it's not getting into new territory. Like it's just doing stuff I already know how to do fast. Um, coding, like coding new features, that's like experimenting and trying to figure out. So like that doesn't work good with speed modding. So like whenever I do speed modding, it's pretty much always going to be stuff that I know how to do. So it's going to be like 
like quests are great for that. It's creating something I know how to do. It would be like if I was an artist, like making web, you know, like like Nihir could speed mod and make weapons or animations because he knows that stuff. Or like, um, uh, you know, I can I can do quests. I'm trying to think what else I could speed mod. Oh, I could speed mod designing new plots. Like I could do that. Um, but it's got to be stuff where it's like I'm not I'm exploring new things creatively, but I'm not having to solve new problems is kind of how I got limit speed modding to currently. Because I could speed mod as hard as I want on coding and some of it's just going to be me staring at a screen of text and not doing anything. <laughs> I'm not going to be riveting stuff. Because I couldn't even talk if I'm trying to code out. If I'm trying to like figure out a coding problem, I can't even really talk it out. It's kind of kind of be just like me battling in my head. Or I'll make like a tum bunch of bad uh, decisions on cam and then have to roll all the code back and yeah it wouldn't wouldn't be good Sonic Phil I've told you a couple times to check out that new build mechanic for six hit a button to change between up down and forward back yeah that sounds perfect that sounds like a perfect implementation but yeah I haven't been in 76 in a long time the last time I loaded into 76 I think was um, when they launched the first half of the Brotherhood of Steel quest line and then I never played it never played the Brotherhood of Steel because I think I got stuck in the um, I was sucked into the bullion grind, and then that's and then like when I realized I was in a grind loop, I was like, "Oh, I'm done with this game. I don't. This is MMO. This is an MMO. Get me out of here, quick!" Um, and then I never logged back in again. Arissa, will any of the SS2 team have access to the beta copies? Um, there's a lot of people on the. Uh, I mean, like every all the develop. So we have lots of people that I would consider on the team. Um, all of our developers get a new alpha build every couple of days, so they've had it for a while. Um, and then we have a handful of alpha testers, um, which are mostly uh, patrons and some people who have been very helpful in the beta testing. Um, and then when we get to beta, which is when I can, we switch from alpha to beta when we're feature complete. So when we have like all the quests have been played once through by our dev team successfully and like uh, there's no you know i'm not really adding any more new mechanics like then we switch to beta and then i open up the invite circle a little wider um like that's when we'll get where i'll usually bring in um anybody who's released an add-on pack i'll probably bring in a lot of people who have competed in the city plan contest and we'll get a much wider pool and that's when we get like really good feedback to and and bug reports and then we're not even, we're, I would say, I, I, we're not even close to that, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's all relative, like, you know, close compared to the, the, the fact that we've been developing the Chapter 3 for the last 18, no, not 18 months. What have we been going on for? No, we started in January of last year, so 15 months. Um, and like, relative to that, we're close, but, like, it's not like we're days away or anything. Because the... The biggest hurdle we have right now is getting all the main quest stuff working because we went way more open ended with it. So like a lot of the main quest is a lot more, um, a lot more player options, and so it's a lot more complicated. So it makes the quest development a lot harder. Oscar Fry, I got a speed mount idea for you: a fat boy launcher backpack for dog meat. Uh, <laughs> are, we, are we calling it the fat boy now? So the fat man forever. Is that what Cyrus brought us? Yeah, again, that would not be a, a speed mod idea because I don't know how to do any of that. So, like, speed modding has to be stuff that I basically know how to do all the parts of. Um, so, yeah, so new, like, new quests are good for that. New building designs. What else could I speed mod? Uh, I could do, like, any of the add-on pack type stuff, like new HQ rooms. Um new uh like flags new pet pet names like the simple stuff or some uh new leader traits new leaders like that's the type of stuff i could speed mod for sure new world repop i could do fast um but yeah anything that's like that i've never done anything close to before that's like bottomless pits of experimentation that's the stuff that does not go good with speed modding and that's like that's the type of stuff that I'm trying to be done with right now with chapter three. Like, there's still a few more things I have to do. I got I, I actually did a bunch today where I solved some of our last few. Like, we have this on paper that we want it, and I okayed it because I knew it was feasible, but I don't actually know how to do it yet. And I solved a few more of those today. Um, so the list is is slimming down on what's left to do where there's just it's not possible to do yet. Like we don't have the code, but now we have a lot more of it. 
Um, and, I'm, and I'm talking very vaguely because I don't want to give away the story stuff. Weapon for Gremlin. So, Grem unfortunately, um, so with Gremlin and a lot of the other settlers, we had we had assembled a small team to expand most of our side characters, and and it just we couldn't get any traction with it. A lot of stuff didn't go well. Um, I think in the end we're gonna expand like four, maybe five characters, side characters, and Gremlin was not one of them. Just the uh, just couldn't get the the writing moving fast enough. The um, folks just didn't have the there wasn't the excitement there was when we originally did it. So, like, you know, I had tried to work with a very small squad for it. And, like, in hindsight, maybe we needed to expand the expand that team a little bit um, to get it done. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, that that original plan didn't didn't play out how I liked. And so we recently canned it because it was just going to... We could realize it was, it was going too slow. And uh, at some point, it was going to be impossible to get those voice actors to come back. Like, we had convinced them last year to come back and then you know, took a year to actually get any scripts together. So it was just like, all right, at this point, it's too slow. Can't do it. Um, but such is the, such is the way of volunteer development. But that's why I don't, I usually don't uh, talk a lot about stuff that we're just planning because sometimes this happens. There's a lot of features over the, over the years of some settlements where like internally we talked about it and got real excited about it. And then we just scrapped it because we realized the time investment was too much, or because the team, the portion of the team working on it, just didn't didn't get anywhere with it. Um, I can tell you about a couple that got canned that are very unlikely to ever come in. Um, so, like one, when we were working on Rise of the Commonwealth, um, we would have meetings with all the settlement designers periodically to talk about what we were going to do with each settlement because we wanted it Rise of the Commonwealth to feel like if you just chose. All the city plans from Rise of the Commonwealth, they would all kind of have different roles and um, ultimately they would all kind of balance each other out. So that's why like one of the big complaints we got when our OTC came out was some people would run like the Red Rocket city plan and they'd be like, there's no food here. Um, and it was because our, our design pattern was like, well, if somebody built all these settlements, it would be cool if each of them served different roles. Like this one's going to have uh, a lot of this and that one's going to have a lot of that. And... Um, for example, a Red Rocket had a lot of defense, and it was like, even though you can't share defense, the idea was they would be defending the region. They were going to, the checkpoint between, like, san to Sanctuary, and they could easily go help defend Abernathy. Um, and so, like, we had, like, this, we had RP'd it all out. So it was, like, worrying less about mechanics, because back when, in SS1, the mechanic pool wasn't that deep. There wasn't, you know, it was basically, like... You had your, we basically piggybacked on base game mechanics and we had dynamic needs. So it was, you know, you had to, um, you had to have a little more food and water defense and power than you would in the base game. But that was really the, the extent of the depth. And then it was just a lot of visuals. And we didn't have all the cost system or all these extra gameplay mechanics. Um, and so like, it wasn't the end of the world. But now when we port them forward to SS2, um, those, those differences I think are less of a problem. Um, because people are used to the idea of not having everything in every settlement, thanks to caravan services. Um, but anyway, going totally off track there. The reason I bring up RTC uh, and the feature I'm you know, going to talk about is one of the in one of the planning meetings we had this really cool idea for for uh, Spectacle because Spectacle is a monster settlement, and when you see the level of detail that we have in the Rise of the Commonwealth city plans, you can imagine how scary Spectacle Island was to everybody because we were looking. Uh, and, and a little more background information on ROTC. So the plans you guys have for ROTC now are extremely stripped down versions of them in SS2 in particular. So when we originally designed them, it was basically no limit. The designers could go as crazy as they wanted um, because we didn't think about performance. We were just thinking like, let's just make really beautiful settlements. And then um, and then we figured worst case scenario, we could do a pass and like strip out some of the detail, um, and release that separately for Xbox. And then the amount of work it took to strip those down. And then the amount of work it took to port to SS2, we ultimately settled on, okay, we can't like the amount of work it will require to port, uh, both of the stripped down versions and the full complexity versions is going to be too much. So we opted to just do the simplified versions because that's what most people can use. So anyway, so we have these crazy detailed settlements. A lot, some people in the community have experienced the ones from SS1. They know they can they can vouch for how crazy detailed some of the original designs were. Um, 
And so we were thinking about how are we gonna do that for spectacle? So we had this idea of what if we broke spectacle into like three regions? So it was like the shipping container area, uh, the power boat area, and like the main house. And like you, we, were, we were gonna have um, a quest and it was gonna be like three groups fighting for control over spectacle. And you could start siding with them and then whoever you sided with their section would get built up higher and then when the settlements all when they all leveled up another part of the quest would start and then you would have to solve the you know you'd help decide who the the, the winner was and then at level two then then whoever you kind of uh propped up with their place would be the biggest one and it was going to be this like that hugely dynamic like each of these three groups would have a different section of the set settlement with a different design in the city plan um, that would have multiple levels and depending on who you started with you'd see different versions so it was going to have to be like each of them were going to have to have like nine variations of the city plan and then like and the la when they got to level three the one whoever you propped up would be like in charge of the whole island um it's a big complex thing and then like that ended up getting scrapped just because we it took so long just to build out all the the city plans that we did um like when we shipped rotc we only had i think 18 settlements done out of the 35 that bethesda has uh and then so then when we finally and then we didn't even get we never even got to a spectacle island one in ss1 um we we only even have a spectacle island in rotc because andy cowdy uh had later joined he did i think he he won the masters contest for season one of the city plan contest and then sometime after that, he joined our team as a writer and then uh, agreed to let us put that in as our Spectacle Island design so that we would have something in our OTC. So, uh, so yeah, so that's like, that's an example of a, a big feature we never talked about publicly and I'm glad we didn't because it sounded really awesome. And I think I would love to have it now in hindsight, but we unfortunately don't have it. Ed Solace, thank you for the donation. No message, but thank you for the donation anyway. Arissa, thanks for the charity stream. It was amazing. I agree. It was amazing. It was so funny. I said at the start of the stream, I, my face hurt for hours afterward because I laughed so much during that. I kept having to mute myself just to not inter I didn't want to interrupt those guys. Yagi, see, will there ever be a way to share defense between settlements? Yes, there will be. There is a way coming in chapter three. And that is going to be one of the most important changes to, to SS2. Like it was one of those things where like when we when we planned it and like had it on paper, it was like, oh this is not gonna be a big deal. And then when we started when I when I started discussing it with people and it was like, oh this is big this is actually a huge deal. Like this is a huge deal. Um it fundamentally changes the whole way you can play the mod. It's actually really, really cool. I'm very glad we're finally doing it. It was actually planned um we planned on adding having the shared defense system back in Conqueror. Um, we had a building plan all designed for it, and then when Conqueror's development got derailed, it never happened. Will ROTC be worked on after Chapter 3? Um, I mean, one of these days, like, we need to come up with, like, a better method to, um, to update city plans. So that we can more easily fix things like floating objects and stuff, but unfortunately, it's very, very challenging. So it's the the ROTC, as far as I know, like it only it well, I fixed most of the worst issues of it. As far as I know, the remaining issues are there's a handful of floating items in some settlements, and there are a handful of duplicate plots. But other than that, I'm not aware of any significant issues with ROTC. Are there are there some outstanding massive issues that you're aware of that you're hoping I get to? Excuse me. Ah. Love me some iced coffee. I recently read that uh, Starbucks now year-round sells more iced coffee than hot coffee. Which I kind of see why. Like, a, especially like a cold brew. It's, I, I just... It's becoming so much more enjoyable than hot coffee. Like, because hot, like hot coffee... Uh, if I, you know, if I make a good brew is always good, but like if I'm just buying it out at random places, like getting it at diners or random coffee shops, like it's a, it's a crapshoot whether it's gonna be good, but I can't imagine, I can't remember the last time I had a cold brew where I wasn't just completely satisfied. 
<clears throat> Last I hear is ROC city plans were not calculated right on how much they produce and such. Um, I'm not sure about that. I know that they have, um, they had issues, they used to have issues with the number of settlers and we fixed that. They had issues with, they would crash and cause like crazy distortion with, um, certain mods installed like uh what is it workshop rearranged i think was one of the big ones where it would like some of the models they replaced we're baked into pre-combines with our city plans and, and we just frag fragmented all of our pre-combines in the last rtc update so that issue should be resolved those were the two biggest ones i'm aware of um and like i said i think the biggest one that's irritating is the duplicate plots because i know it's it's confusing because the the duplicate plot has been an ongoing reported issue because the plots will remain duplicate until you show up at the settlement and just chill for a while and let the game catch up and scrap everything because you can't scrap things remotely um, based on coordinates. We could scrap things remotely just like by fetching them from the settlement, but a lot of the scrapping we do between city plan levels is based on uh, coordinate data. And so like doing that remotely is almost impossible. Um, so we have to do it when you come back to the settlement. And that ends up, so then a lot of people come back and there's a lot of duplicate items <clears throat> excuse me and and if you just like let yourself let your character sit there for 10 minutes it'll they'll all get cleaned up um but because there are also some actual duplicate plots uh and i think they're duplicate because they're like rotated the wrong way so it might be like i know in our in the rotc red rocket there is a a plot like right around here where i've got this house and then if you level up the city plan, that same plot is there, but it's rotated 90 degrees. And so SS2 sees that as two different plots, even though it's supposed to be in the city plan design. And, if, and under the hood, the way city plans work is you build a settlement and export it, and it just exports all the coordinates and like what everything is. And then it takes all that data and compares it to the next level. So then you scrap a bunch of things, export again, and you take those two exported lists of items and you compare them to, to each other. We say you diff them, you basically find the differences between them. Um, and that's basically what a city plan is. And so it relies on your perfect matching coordinates to determine if something's the same item between levels. And so like, I know in ROTC, we had some mistakes in there where, where things were, um, like offset slightly or rotated slightly between levels. And I think it was because some of our plans, like when ROTC was like designed, like the folks were designing all these settlements while I was still figuring out the code. Um, in fact, when ROTC was first going, we didn't even have levels. That got added in like halfway through development of like, I had a, a um, like an epiphany one day that how we could do leveled city plans. And then I pitched that to the team and, um, I assured them it would be easy, we could pull it off, and that I would help them get it done. But it was a it was a major uh, it was a major change, excuse me, in the design plan. Um, and so then, like, there were a lot of rough edges as we were, excuse me, preparing settlements for that. Nezzy, team iced coffee anytime, all the time. Heck yeah! I I used to be an against it when it's cold outside, but I've kind of got, I've gotten past that. Like when it's like really cold, like if it's if it's so cold, I don't want to carry the iced coffee outside, then I won't get it. But otherwise, like today where I'm at, it was like 40 degrees, and I'm just like that's that's not too cold. I can carry I can carry an iced coffee home. Turn that. I really need to I really need to get into cold brewing at home because it's it's ex too expensive to buy it out all the time. Mount 142, did you get Spectacle Island grouped into just three areas? If so, it could be a competition over builds for each area, one month per level, building on the last month's winner for each area. Oh, that could be an interesting competition. We had a just we had a big discussion with the uh, with the people who can participate regularly in the city plan contest a couple months back, oh, probably about six months back now, uh, about some things we could do differently to uh, spice it up to keep things exciting. Because basically, we have like once chapter three hits. Like, we have a great plan for new city plan contests. After that, that'll be season four. But in the interim, there's all this these months of, like, where there's no... They're not working toward a Masters or anything. So, like, trying to think of things to be exciting. Now, so far, we've mostly been settled on doing custom locations. So, mod-added settlements to, to keep things spicy. Um, but, yeah, something like that could be interesting. The one I really want to do that a lot of them are interested in doing is... I have a rough plan in my head of how we could make... 
uh, make it possible to manually build in HQ. And I thought it could be really cool to do like a HQ building contest and then figure out. But what I'm what I'm really what I need to do this is I need to create a few more tools so that way we could take people's city plans in HQ if we made it buildable and convert them into actual proper HQ rooms. Because HQ happens to be unique in that instead of using special building plans like plots do, um, each of the the room construction and upgrades you do in HQ, those are actually little micro city plans. Um, so it actually would, would work convert very nicely over. So that's something that I'm hoping to pull off. Um, I had told them I might be able to pull it off before chapter three, but it's looking less likely because as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're, co we're coming up on, or we're past, I think we're at, I think we're around 15 or 16 months of development already. So it's like, I don't have time to stop and do anything else. I need to, all, all dev time needs to be, let's get this thing out the door because not that I want to rush a product out. I just want to like, I want to make sure that it is out when people still care because I feel once... You know, we've talked about this many times. Once Starfield comes out, it's the same thing. Anytime Bethesda releases a new game, a lot of the player base just abandons the old games other than, you know, maybe a, a semi-annual replay through. Um, and they move on to the next big thing because that's when you get kind of the general feel of a Bethesda game, but you get all the latest and greatest uh, improvements to, to gameplay. So... Uh, I want to get it out before then. Like that's like a like. I mean, it was to the point where if they had released in November, if, like if they hadn't announced the delay, we would have just chopped like half the features you guys are going to get to make it happen. Like I will, like I will, I will not sleep for six weeks if I have to to get it out uh, in time to give you guys a month to play it. So like you know what what is so like you you know like you hear it here first. Like the absolute latest, I will let. Chapter three come out is August sixth because I think that's a, a month before Starfield. I want to give you guys a good month of playing Chapter three um, before Starfield. So I'm hoping earlier than that. Like so, but uh, right now I can't give a date because there's too much. That's not even in beta yet. Skywise have some way to submit mods for approval. I'm getting frustrated by being so permanently limited. Um. Oh, are you talking about for the city plan contest? The, the, I mean, the biggest issue, the biggest reason that we don't allow mo other mods during the city plan contest is because of Xbox. Like Xbox players, want, especially when they're using SS2, they basically have no mods available. They don't have any space. So the goal, like one of the biggest goals of the city plan contest is to get more options um, for players on Xbox. Now, ironically, we can't mega pack up all of the city plans on Xbox, so they don't get access to them anyway. Um, but like, that's always been the big contention. And like, you know, it would be not, you know, any of you guys are welcome to um, release your city plans on Xbox as well. But that's, that's ultimate, like that was why the city plan contest was started, was to like get a large amount of city plans out into the hands of players. And we always want to support Xbox. Like we don't want to treat them like the, uh, like we don't want to just give them the leftovers and like unfortunately they get that a lot because of um space limits but city plans like the only reason that they're limited is because of this is really this is another thing i would love to see with us to fix in the next gen highly doubt they're going to um highly highly doubt it but there's a thing we found out about the script data limit which means that like even though city plan mods are super tiny they hit this arbitrary limit um based on some some setting bethesda did when they compiled the game um, that they could easily change and it would have no impact negative on performance it's just like a thing they have to change but i have i have no way to convince them to change this because so the script data limit is 64 megs of information stored in scripts inside of all mods um we figured this out by trial and error and the base game total has like two and a half megs so it's pretty hard to convince them and like the base game plus all dlc so to convince them that 64 is not enough would be a pretty pretty tough sell and if if they changed it that's like a like because if it's a low low level enough change they would have to re-qa their entire game to make sure it's okay which they might have to do anyway for the next gen so it might not be out of the question to get them to do that but i just i don't think i have anyone's ear at bethesda who who understands or who would like who understands enough about this stuff for me to like get through to them 
Like this would be like if I had, if I got lucky enough to like sit down and have lunch with with one of their with one of their devs, I could I could convince them. But like barring that, I just I don't think that's gonna happen. So anyway, um, Xbox players. One one of the one of the I, I've got a lot of like dream projects. Like where if I had unlimited resources and you know access to other developers to help me unlimitedly. Admittedly, is that a word? <laughs> that I have a couple of projects I would love to see. One would be, I think it would be really cool if you know how you, when you guys go to upload your city plans to the to the um, or your your uh, what do you call them? Your exports to the city plan tool creator we have online. It'd be really cool if we could have an option um, to host it and then let players like go like Nexus style shopping to pick a set a city plan for each settlement and then have it generate them a mod. Like we have all the capabilities to do that. It would just be like need someone to develop the interface for it and all the the back end tools to handle that. But like the actual generate like putting together city plans and generating a plugin, that's all there. It all works. And so we have like the baseline of it. Like that would be one of those things I would love to see happen because then Xbox players could basically hop on a PC, create their own list of city plans from all the different ones you guys have made, upload it, and then uh, be able to dodge the script data limit issue. Xbox players are the redheaded stepchildren of Fallout. Yeah, that is unfortunate. But hopefully the hopefully the next gen update will change that. I mean, if they get... Uh, I, I, I really wish we knew how much effort Bethesda was going to put into it. But we haven't heard a peep about it. It was almost like... I don't even know why they told us about it. Because it was like... It was such a tease. Too large pepperoni. Glad you guys offer Xbox support despite the challenges. I'm on PC now, but would never have found us as two if not for that option. It would be missing out on so much. And I, and I hope to, so I, I'm actually, I'm 90% certain that after Chapter 3, assuming I continue to do Let's Plays of Fallout 4, um, like, which, like, a lot of, a lot of everything's going to depend on what happens after Starfield, like, if I get into modding it or not. Um, but I, I, I think I'm going to do a um, Xbox playthrough. I'm going to, I have a, uh, what do you call it? A capture card. I just need a. Uh, I need to wait till I get my next PC because this one has a lot of trouble. I can't stream and capture at the same time. Like just chokes. Um, and so I need. Uh, and I. But I am planning on buying a new PC soon to get up to the latest because this thing is probably seven or eight years old now with a few upgrades in it. So I think it's about it's about time. Um, and like then I'll be able to. I want to do a, an Xbox capture playthrough so that I can see all the sticky points and see like where the code is. I know there are some spots where the code is slow and you know, most of us know now like, okay, look at, you know, it starts to back up. You just go chill in this corner and wait for a little while. I want to see if there are any of those points that happens consistently on Xbox where maybe we could, um, uh, streamline it in some way. Maybe not, maybe like, um, cut like have the option to turn off some features on xbox that would speed up certain parts of it like i know like um city plan upgrades are a huge one where it'd be like if there is there a way we could arrange that on xbox that runs a little smoother um hq i think needs uh it has some serious issues on on xbox that i would like to witness for myself basically just see like and, and i'm not gonna and like not on a um uh an older xbox i think like maybe on the um but also not on an X. I think I would probably go pick up a, a Series S. Is that the one? There's two of the new ones. Um, basically, like, the lowest end one I would need to try the next-gen update when it comes out on Xbox, just so I could, like, get a feel for a feel for what Xbox players are going through so that they can have a decent experience. This is not This is like a, if I'm going to do another playthrough, uh, I, that's, where I'll, that's what I'll aim at. I don't know that this is going to happen. This is one of those, like, just plans in the back of my head but knowing like that there's going to be a lot of like starfield is such a big game changer um because it's you know a big mass audience exodus and i want to play it myself i want to mod it maybe um so not even just audience just myself my own my own desires there could be it could be a change so we got to see when that comes out how good it is when we get the modding tools and that that will heavily determine the trajectory of of all things with me and some settlements
Ron Falk about consoles. This is the main reason I play the games on PC because I have some more options to mod the games I play. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're heavily restricted on access. I, I feel like Xbox being able to play the mod is kind of like the gateway drug, and it's. I've seen plenty of people tell me they they the you know one of the reasons they picked up the game again on PC was to play some supplements, which is very flattering. Um, but I would also like to be like you know if we look at it that way. Um, then, like that's if it's mostly as an onboarding device to get people to try it on PC, and that's kind of what Extended has let us do is we look at it from that perspective of like, okay, we can get let's give let's make sure the players on Xbox can play through the story, and they get enough content to get hooked and that they see the that this is a good experience. Then you know if they come over to PC, then they're only gonna have a better experience. Like that's kind of what I want to keep doing. I want to keep them feature parity as much as possible, um, and I also don't want to get I also don't want to be tempted to get sucked into the the X edit rabbit hole. I mean, not X edit, um, uh, uh, script extender rabbit hole, because you can do unlimited things. Once you once you are hacking the the game exe, you can basically do anything. So then, and that's too much freedom. Like, it's the it's the blank it's the blank canvas problem. Um, I've almost had that happen with Chapter Three. I fortunately had the the guardrails of like knowing what Conqueror wanted to do and being able to bring that in. Um, but, uh, you know, having an unlimited, unlimited options. This is one of the reasons that I, I tend to prefer modding over, over tinkering with a full game is that like when I have too many things to pick from, it becomes like, um, uh, what is that? Uh, choice paralysis where it's like, I have too many things I can, too many different things I can do. So I don't move on any of them. And, uh, yeah, having the limited options, I think is a, a limited things is kind of a good a good way to keep myself uh, creative mod 142 once ss2 is done you plan to do a second stripped down version without most quests to better fit on xbox so they can have a few other mods correct yeah i'm gonna do so when we get ss2 to like um every, like most things are fixed and i'm not adding any new quality of life features i'm going to do a uh, a framework edition of SS2 that's like, here's all the mechanics, but it won't have any quests, and uh, it will take out as many like um, visual elements. Like it'll be like there'll be one plot option, like one building plan for each class, so you can you know play with all the classes. Um, it'll take out you know like there won't like it'll probably like take out all the dogs, like the custom dog models, like anything that's not necessary to play the mods and mechanics will get stripped out and that will be the framework edition. And that will be, I'll probably release it on PC too because somebody will want it just for like, there's some people out there who, um, you know, just would not rather not have, you know, a, what's going to be effectively like a three gig mod once we have uh, chapter three included. Maybe more, maybe four when we're done. Um, but yeah, I want to have a, a stripped down version that's, no quests, no super filler, no filler content, no no uh, graphical stuff, just all just core mechanics so that people can make load orders that are like, I can play SS2 as my settlement gameplay loop, but my I also then have room to try out other story mods that are on Xbox. That is definitely the plan. Route 142, ask GPT-4 to make the HQ and City Plan building interfaces for you. Yeah, GPT-4 is not that smart. GPT, like, I love ChatGPT. I use it almost every day. Um, and it is very good at producing language. It is not very good at, at like, puzzle, at logic. Um, like, it doesn't solve math. Um, so, like, you know, I can ask it to... Um, summarize things for me and, and generate like ideas but as far as like doing complex coding with vague language it does not do good at that like you, it can it can kind of give you a, yeah I've, I've had a lot of uh, of bad luck with stuff like that so like having it come up with uh, interface ideas yeah that's I think that's beyond beyond what it can do I have been planning on I want to make a um, a chat GPT for modders. I think like a, I've been I have a few bookmarked ones of like how to make your because the the GPT model um, is open. Like you can anybody can go create stuff with it. It's actually been around for quite a few years, and like OpenAI was the first one to create like the chat bot model where it was like accessible, and that's what made it blow up and get on everyone's radar. Like the like this 
large language model stuff has been around for quite a while. And uh, it was they just kind of like solved the, the user, one of these user interface problems. But anyway, so you can train those that large language model on any data set and I, I really want to I want to make one where it's like trained on um, like the Nexus forums creationkit.com maybe the sim settlements forums uh, the uh, uh, what's the website where they do um, where's the forums for the unofficial fall of war badge afk mods i think is the website anyway but all these like major modding sources uh tez alliance probably lovers lab because they actually do have a lot of good bethesda game information but basically like train it on all those so that we can ask it mod questions like mod making questions i think that would be a huge game changer like if suddenly like people could um instantly figure out how to do how to what approaches to take to make the mods they have in their heads because i think that's like that's one of the barrier to entry as a lot of times you have like this rough idea and you don't know where to start and you don't know who to ask and you know ask like i get a lot of times when i come back to my nexus inbox after um i, I check it like once a month to be honest and uh, there'll be like half of them are usually people asking me how would you approach this mod or is this mod possible um and like one of the one of my favorite things to use chat gpt for is like a it's an unjudging uh tutor who can tell me how to do anything that i'm embarrassed to ask my colleagues because i should already know it uh, like one of the things i use it a ton for is linux stuff that i just never learned for some reason or that i don't have memorized for the server stuff that i have to do and like now chat gpt i can ask it without having to ask you know people in my field um who would look at me like how do you not know how to do that are you serious like and i think that having that same thing uh, for the modding community would be huge i don't know how um I don't know how that would uh, like. I, I feel like yeah. I don't know. There's a lot. And there's a lot of. Um, uh, there's now a lot of like people getting angry about their data getting scraped for large language models, which I guess I get it for like art, you know, like but like for knowledge, I I don't I don't understand. If, I don't know that anybody would care if we did that or not, because um, it would be, you know, we're all trying to share knowledge here. Like the I think nobody. I think everyone agrees that. Tribal knowledge and gatekeeping sucks. So if we can do something to break that up, I think that'd be pretty big. Anthony P. Ra, 4090 PC. That would be an awesome thing to see you do modeling with. Uh, yeah, I got. I don't know if I, is that the is that the biggest they got right now? The 4090 is that the I don't know. I have lo, I've lost track of all the the graphic cards that have come out. I do know that the the last time I saw the price of Nvidia's, I'm just like I don't think so. Like, is that the, the 4000 series? Is that the one that's, like, crazy expensive? Like, it's like, that's the expensive, like, the cost of that graphics card, isn't it as much as most average gaming PCs are? Because <laughs> that, if that's the case, I, I might skip and wait till the till the 5000 series and see if they bring the price back down to earth. I remember the jump between the two ser two of the series was crazy. I think it was the 4000 series where the price jump from the 3000 series was astronomical. And I think the reason they did that is because they overproduced the 3000 series for for uh, um, crypto miners. And then now there's whole dedicated cards for mining. And so now nobody wants the, the 3000 series. And they have just, or they have tons and tons of them in... Uh, that they overproduce, that they need to they need to move, so they don't want people skipping it to go to the four thousand series. That's my my theory on that. But yeah, I don't think uh, I see you guys talking about uh, GPT and stuff like. I don't, I, I think, I mean, I, we will definitely get to a point eventually where you'll be able to have it kind of make you mods. Like some of the, the, there's a, if you want some, to see some really early examples of like some of the crazy stuff, uh, AI bots are going to be able to do. If you look up auto GPT or baby, uh, baby AGI, there's some really rudimentary examples of like some of the stuff you can do where basically you, you give uh, chatbots the ability to like run code and access APIs, and then you give them like a mission, and then they'll go do things, and they'll generate themselves new commands and do stuff. Right now, they can do real basic stuff. Like I saw a really cool video of somebody who uh, trained their Windows Assistant to interface with with a with a ChatGPT or, or some equivalent, 
And uh, and so they could say, and it's named it Jarvis Weapons. So be like, Jarvis, make me a website with the following features, and it does it, and it makes this. But it's really rudimentary. And I've seen a lot of other examples where it's like the the AI gets stuck in a loop, and it just makes really dumb decisions over and over again. So it's, it's super imperfect, but that's how all tech is when you're prototyping, experimenting. It starts out really janky, um, and it takes a while, and then and then eventually you have some breakthrough, and it makes massive uh, headway. So um, I. I will not be surprised if eventually we're at a point where you're going to have uh and, and it's very soon like in the next in the next five years or so you'll have the equivalent like your computer will be like jarvis from iron man it'll be like you can just tell it to go look up data for you and create things and make little software for you make websites um and you know they're not going to be anywhere near as good as you know, capable coders and graphic designers could do, but it'll be serviceable if you just need its functionality. Like for prototyping and stuff, it'll be amazing. And so I could see being able to teach it to make like really basic mods. You know, it's not gonna make you the next badass weapon mod. It's not gonna make you a sim settlements, but you know, like if you think about the thing I, I talked about earlier in the stream where we, we were in the gray garden and you had those water pipes and like, oh, it'd be cool if you could fill water bottles with them. Like that might be the type of mod it could generate um, for you. Like it's, uh, I could, I could definitely see a, an AI that generates mods being a thing. It'll be really rudimentary and they'll probably require a lot of, uh, you'll have to have a lot of knowledge. This is the thing with the, with the AI now. Um, it's very useful if you know the field for the most part. Fields that, you know, like it can work with generally are going to be ones that don't, there are a few fields that it works really good with if you don't have any knowledge. Like it's really good at writing stuff, like, a, it, like writing uh, essays and things like that, or it's very good at translation. It's very good at, um, creating like legalese and HR type documents. But, um, for things like coding and stuff, you have to do a lot. You have to understand what it's doing that you can tweak it and give it and ask the right questions to massage it. And I think it'll be the same way for, for a mod making AI as it will make a lot of dumb mistakes and you'll need to understand what it's doing so that you can teach it. You can kind of course correct it. Uh, the price is dropping, and yes, the, the 49th is the biggest thing they have right now. It's very powerful, very good at creating anything you need it to do. Okay, cool. Yeah, the, the I'll, have a, I'll have a tough, it'll be a tough for me to swallow spending the same amount on the graphics card as I do on the whole rest of the PC. I don't think I'm, I don't think I can wrap my head around that, because I don't care enough about the, like, the ray tracing and stuff. That's all the, the big rage. I mean, it looks beautiful, but, um... I really just want updated hardware not to try and get the great, latest and greatest in graphics. I just want to have, because, you know, the hardware wears out. Like, this is one of the things that I didn't learn for the longest time is that, like, uh, you know, I always would get mad that it's like, oh, it's, there's no moving parts. It should be fine. But, it's like, on a small enough level, there are moving parts. Like, there's uh, electrons moving all around, and the, over time, the, the uh, electronics just wear down, and they're not as fast. And uh, so I would like just to have some modern hardware just for that sake, just having everything be a little snappier. Uh, Ron Volk, probably this question is asked, but also a farming sim player. We had the issue with the weed growing through buildings. Will this be solved in the future that this auto will be removed? Um, to get rid of like, you know, like the plants that you see on the right hand side of my screen there going through the building. The... The only way to fix that is to break pre-combines, but if we get in the next gen update, if they if 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 they do a next gen update justice, like if they do it a full like DirectX 12 update, like we probably could play with pre-combines turned off and it wouldn't be that bad. Some people can already play with them off. If you can play with the pre-combines off, um, you can actually scrap all that stuff and then it becomes a better experience. So yeah, some of the, the the next gen update might be might make this game absolutely epic it's already one this is already one of my favorite games of all time and so like doing stuff like that could be really amazing i i don't think they're going to do it though i think that like overhauling the engine to that level it, for a free update is very unlikely i think we're going to get real this is why when people ask me like oh is ss2 still going to work i'm not worried about it because like if it were a paid update like I, like special edition like they resold the game to people well, right it wasn't a free update it was like a hey you can buy the game again um and when there's so when there's money behind it, they'll do a little more work. 
but I don't think they're going to put in that much effort into this. I think it's going to be just like real basics, like get it so that it can tap into, to, um, you know, they'll probably add like rudimentary ray trace, like, uh, um, what's the, what's the ray trace like the upscaled ray tracing where it like renders the game out small and then they use AI to upscale. It'll be like, had like that feature to it. And, um, just some like really basic stuff like that. I don't, I don't anticipate us getting this grand overhaul like special edition was. Sonic Phil, Asus NVIDIA, GeForce 4090 uh, is two grand. Yeah, see, that's crazy. Like, you can get a really respectable full PC with a graphics card with probably like a 20 series for under 2,000. So um, spending that on just the graphics card, I'm, I don't think I'm there. I'm not there. The rate of breakthroughs in machine learning has been increasing uh, for the last eight months. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like, it's, it's exponential growth right now for sure. Um, I think it's because people are just, it's low, it's all the low hanging fruit is getting discovered right now. Everybody is like realizing like, oh, these large language models can do way more than we anticipated. Um, and so like everyone's just trying them with all different things. Um, and then like once that's dried up, we'll hit, we'll hit another brick wall. Like I think the next thing people have to, they have to solve is how do you get AI to like actually not just do predictive language generation, but like actually think like actually do some logic generation and i know there's some work going on in that where you give the the ai um some memory so it can remember its own responses and 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 react to that but it's still at the end of the day it's not actually thinking it's just doing predictive language generation so it makes us think that it's acting like a human but it's really not um but if they can actually you know uh, but that that can be that can probably be solved too like we still don't understand how our own brains work with logic of like, you know, how much of it is just because we use language or how much of it requires some sort of like visualization visualization. And then if you combine like large language model plus, uh, you know, the models that do things like um, uh, uh, stable diffusion, like to generate images, like if you combine those together, it can just suddenly have the capability to logic out more stuff. That's all the experience people are doing to figure that stuff out, and it's so it's really cool to watch. There's a really there's a guy I think it's I think his name is Matt Wolf. If you guys anybody's interested in an in AI, uh, let me see if I can find his channel. Um, who does like a recap every week of like all the new the biggest things that have come out? Uh, yeah, Matt Wolf, M A T T W L F E. He does like a little recap every Friday. He does videos almost every day now for, of of uh, uh, AI stuff, but. He does a lot of, or he does really cool recap videos where you can, you know, in 15, 20 minutes, learn all the big things that have happened in AI. Usually it shows off like new types of open source tools and stuff you can try out. He's been a, a big source for me to keep up to date without having to constantly follow it because there are new, like crazy things people are dropping with AI almost every day now. Modern 42, there are a few mods that remove the bushes without touching the precombines. They replace the textures with nulls, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. But then that has the downside of, like, that's impacting the whole world. So then you, like, lose a lot of the vegetation detail in the world. So I don't know that that's the best solution. I mean, it's the best solution we have right now, but it's not ideal. The, the original, you know, like the scrap everything's, all those mods that came out when the game first launched, um, you know, those those are like the ideal situation. Or like what they have in um, 76 is awesome, where if you like, that would be interesting if they would port that feature forward. I bet they could, because 76 is fundamentally, you know, Fallout 4 with a few, with some networking code and a few enhancements tacked onto it. I, I wonder if they'll be able to port that feature forward. I don't think they would. But that would be very interesting. Where, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, in 76, if you, as you're, when you're building things, as the thing you're holding on to approaches um, grass and stuff that's normally baked in the pre combines, it automatically hides it, like locally around that thing, so that you don't get stuck with a bunch of grass clipping through everything. It's really cool. 2000 dollars you can have a three thousand series. Yeah, to me, I mean, to me, like, uh, uh, my my PC budget every every six or seven years is like between twenty five hundred and three thousand. Like, because any more than that just feels crazy. Um, it's like I bought cars for less than that in my life, so it's really hard for me to wrap my head around, 
you know, dropping four or five grand on a machine. I just can't do it. Because like a lot of what you're you're not like it's uh, a lot of what you're paying for is the um, the latest and greatest. Like you you know you there's a there's a point where everything starts dropping in cost, and I like to be at that level. Like I tend to like to buy everything at like slightly above mid grade. Like I want like something that's not ultimate tier, not latest and greatest, because latest and greatest is is super duper expensive. Um, and I don't think you get enough bang for the buck. Like I don't think you're getting enough of the gains for what you're paying. So I like I like to be right in that. There's like a sweet spot where I'm like not I'm, I'm above because the mid tier stuff tends to be um, hard to judge. Like it's like the mid tier, the difference between mid tier and low tier can be pretty tough to judge. Like how good the quality is because there's so many components. There's a lot of especially after you get later in the life cycle and a lot of these techs, you start to get a lot of like junk manufacturers putting out stuff that's gonna burn out like you know you'll see like walmart putting out computers and stuff it's like ah, i don't think i trust walmart to make my computer um but uh uh you know you go up to the highest end of stuff and like they're charging you you know like a thousand extra dollars to get your pc your cpu overclocked by a tiny little bit uh and you'll get that same overclocking for free if you wait a year so let's like we'll kind of find that balance is where i'm at when i buy pcs so I tend to go up to like the, the you know if 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 a uh, like if I go to I buy power and I want to start with a template there I'll start with like whatever they consider their like high quality like I won't go to the mid it won't go to the ultra like around high, where I feel like I can get a decent bang for my buck and that's kind of the stuff I'll buy. So if that involves a three a three X series great if it involves a two X series that's fine. Um, I just need new hardware just like a new. Really, just need a new motherboard processor. I really could just upgrade this machine, but I have use for a second machine right now because I want. Uh, well, first of all, my, my kid, my oldest kid is starting, is going to start needing a computer soon for, for school and stuff. I actually started, I tried to start teaching him, uh, unity cause I'm like, oh, cause he loves video games, um, and knows that I work on, uh, a mod that like he just calls it the, the game that the game that dad's making. And, uh, so I was trying to teach him unity. He's like, Oh, how cool would it be if he was like a little prodigy at it, but he does not have the attention span for it, whatever. Like I got him to go through all the steps of a tutorial to make a flappy bird clone. And he loved that he made it, but he didn't really understand what he was doing. And it took us like four hours to follow a 30 minute tutorial. Cause like, he's not good with the mouse and like typing takes him forever. Like I type all the code for him because uh, that's too much, uh, too much typing. But, uh, Anyway, I'm gonna need another computer soon. So, the uh, and and I think it's about time. I think after I ran this guy for seven years with uh, with upgrades to keep limp me along. All new plumbing in my basement for one K. So yeah, two K for a graphics card is hard to justify. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, that's that's a tough that's a tough sell. I'm trying to remember what I paid for my last car. Um, it wasn't that much. Got a because uh, I, I never buy them new. I always buy always buy used cars. Um, I think we paid like fifty five hundred, and like for a, a car that was in really good. We got it from somebody who's uh, we got a deal from somebody from like a friend of a friend. But, uh, like, I can't imagine ever spent like, that to me, could, like, if I ever get close to spending that on a computer, I'm going to just feel so dirty every time I turn the thing on. <laughs> so I can't do it. Like, I feel like if, if, if something that big and that useful, uh, I can't be spending that much on. I mean, granted, the other, the other side of the coin, I think some people who justify all the expenses is, like, if I think about how many hours I actually use my computer... And it's like, okay, well, that is probably the, the thing I use most in my life. Like, it's I do my job on here. I do my hobby on here. Um, then it, I, I get how people justify it. I just, it's, it's hard to stomach. I think it's just me. It's just, uh, it's cheapness in my blood. So does anybody have any, uh, anything they want me to show them in SS2 while we're, while we're sitting here floating? I'm talking about AI and cars and graphics cars for the last hour. I 
I think you guys are I think you guys are ready ready for chapter three. We need to get this thing out. We need to get it out there. We're 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 making good progress. I will say that. Um, I hope. And I, well, right now we have a, a like normally this is the time in development we would be like assembling the final couple of trailers. But I had a I put them I put a a stop to it until we get a little bit further. Like we need to have. There are certain uh, milestones we got to hit now this time, um, because I'm uh, I want all of our effort put on to getting this thing out to you guys soon. I want this to be it'd be nice if we had like a summer of chapter three. That would feel really good. That's chapter three and a nuke. Yeah, nukes win. Where's Choo Choo to to poke me? Uh, Oscar Fry. Uh, I do kind of want your thought on something related to SS2. Okay. Yogi, I can't think of any other questions that would get a you'll have to wait and see chapter three type answer. Yeah. <laughs> those are those are gonna be a lot of my answers, aren't they? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of um Yeah, there's a lot there's so many things that are changing. Like that it'll it's gonna and it'll take a while. This is one of the um the uh one of the, gonna be one of the weird parts about timing, especially with the season four of the City Plan contest. It's gonna take a while for everybody to like wrap their head around the implications of all the new features in chapter three and how they're going to dramatically alter how you can play some settlements. Like we're not going to like take away your ability to play it, how you've always played it, but it's just going to open up so many new options um, that I think it'll be a while before everybody fully like grasps it and wraps their head around it. And it'll change the question about balance a lot because it'll be like, Oh, there's now this other thing I can do instead. Um, or, Oh, I didn't think to try it that way. Um, so it'll be re really interesting space. I'm actually really looking forward to, um, seeing some let's plays from you guys, especially from people who do like the like deep dive gaming, who's doing like the really dig into the mechanics and try out different things, or or when I do my own let's plays on here of thinking of of, of starting to to try out different things with the new stuff and seeing how it impacts things because there's like a lot there's a lot more options for how you can approach things it becomes a much more open game. Um, in in we've been joking a lot in. Uh, and dev chat about how we're starting we're slowly becoming rimworld <laughs> with some of the features we're adding oscar Fry, do you think you can go to the building where you meet up uh for the gunner hq attack yeah i can go over there let me uh get out of let's see tm tfc we'll do tmm1 i'll just teleport over there Oh wait, I can't because I don't have. Uh, oh, I can COC over there. I just need to find the name of the place. So it is. Where is it at? It's down here somewhere. There it is, Gunners Plaza. So we'll teleport to what's one that I can probably guess? Milton General Hospital. Let's try that. We'll do COC Milton General EXT. Yep, guessed it. All right. Will you show us how to make big nukes? Um, so it's gonna. I mean, yeah, how would you make big nukes? So like, I ha I have a rough plan on my head of how we're gonna do it. Um, the one though, the biggest trick to it is gonna be there's a papyrus function called translate. Uh, it's like translate ref, and it basically lets you take any model and move it have it move like animate in any direction and i think that's going to be like the the first key to it to actually launching it um but i think um because we work with neher so much who can do actual proper animations I, I think we'll end up with something a lot prettier than just so the problem with the translate ref is it's all um the animation is perfectly smooth it's not it's always linear it's linear movement so it's like every frame it moves the same amount and that's not very realistic things tend to have like they build up momentum over time or they'll start out slower and uh we call it easing in animation and you can't really do that with the papyrus functions so it, things just look so much better if we actually hand animate it all right oscar almost there walking over to the spot right now Going on in here. Let's see if we got children. Hello. Oh, I'm on God mode. Okay. No, like, this is no problem. We got double barrel. This is 
has got to be really hard to watch for you guys. <laughs> it's making me a little dizzy. Like trying to hold hold down against the the uh, kick. Is that everybody? Oh, the gunners are coming over here too. Hello. No one can withstand God Mode Double Barrel. Who else is fighting over here? Oh, hello. Is that everybody? Okay, I think that's enough where we can calmly read chat. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what you wanted over here, Oscar. Sonic Pill. Anyway, I'm even more excited about Chapter 3 now, especially learning there'll be some retro updates, the old chapters. How can I help that doesn't involve coding or money? How can you help that doesn't involve coding or money? Let me think about that. Hmm. I mean, hype helps. Like, just, uh, you know, popping into these streams and being excited is, is good. Good for, for team morale. Um... You know, tracking. Uh, you can, you can track down any uh, anybody who's worked on the mod. We got all but a lot of people in the credits page and tell them how much you liked their work. That's good for morale. As long as you don't do it in a creepy, creepy stalkery way. <laughs> you just do it in a in a friendly public way, like on tw tweeting at people. That, that's a good one. Um, stuff like that. that helping out morale with excitement. That definitely helps. Should have just run. Okay, Oscar Fry says, so my idea for that location is related to the faction in the game. Do you think we can like put Minutemen artillery positions near the location the, that fired during the attack? I mean, if you want to make such a mod, you can, but that would not work well with what like with the way we have it set up. Um, like we're not gonna we're not gonna mess with that quest now because it's already like it took us quite a few months to get it all where all the different options work for it. So. Um, we don't want to introduce any more variables. Like when we go back and mess with content, um, it's mostly going to be minor stuff. Like I know right now Cobus is doing a pass to fix a lot of our subtitle issues. Um, I wrote an AI software that, um, analyzes our audio files and prints out what the actor actually says so that we can rectify the things where the, where the actor went slightly off script. So like, there's a lot of those subtitle issues that nobody reports because it's just like, oh, he said one word differently. It's not the end of the world. The lip sync still looks good, um, but we're gonna go through and like get that perfected, perfected, and then um, uh, you know, long term, our plan is to smooth out some of the, the tutorial space of chapter one to make it. There's a few things we want to do a little bit differently there, like um, tutorialize a little bit more in the early section, but also offer a skip option for people who have played the mod a million times, who are just like, yeah, I just want to get to, because a lot of people say now, what you're saying is like the mod, like the story really starts at where there's smoke, which is true. Like before that, it's, you know, it's kind of, it's uh, other than like the, the obviously the com array or the, the com hub has a big, is, is a big part of the story. So like you could argue that doing that is important to the story, but um, you know, giving people an option that doesn't require running the cheat command that is like logically sensible um, to get more quickly to like all the plot unlocks and get to the uh, get to the elements of our story that are the, the, like to the narrative and stuff and that are less tutorially. Like we want to get we have that as an option. Um, also, chap like we want to backfill. Um, I would while I would love to go fix the tutorial for HQ, like redesign it. Um, so it's less rushed because I think that's the biggest problem with the with the HQ tutorial right now is that it's you pretty much get all of the information about how to play a super complex game system crammed into you know 20 minutes of gameplay like it's just too much. Um, I would love to go back and do that. I don't think that that it's that's going to be feasible. So like instead, likely what we'll do is uh, offer a an automated mode for it so that it's like people who are just like eye rolling like nope uh, uh, this is not for me um, that they can just like say okay you guys take care of it and it'll just kind of build itself um, that'll be probably the thing we end up backfilling for chapter two but otherwise like, we're going to try as much as possible not to break any of the quests so we don't want to touch them too much like as you can see like even minor things we do that seem like they shouldn't have a problem but end up breaking older stuff like the um the uh the little animation we have after you exit the concord tunnels like that broke for something completely unrelated or 
Um, I know, like, we, we keep randomly breaking the lights in Concord just because, like, we're patching one thing to fix it and, like, oh, we accidentally messed with that. So, uh, messing with old content is, is, uh, it's risky business. Sonic Phil, we need a timed nuke area to spawn a big boss like in 76. Um, yeah, that could be interesting. It's definitely, that would definitely be less fun single player. Because it's like those repetitive things, like the real fun of those repetitive things is like you and your friends all know what's coming and you guys can all just jump around and have fun doing it while you're, while you're BSing on voice. Like that's really where the fun of that kind of stuff comes in. I don't know. I think it would get pretty tired pretty quick in single player. Nick Carter, will we get a new trailer for Chapter 3 soon? Uh, so basically right now, um, we're in the process. So uh, Sir Rick, our lead writer, is in the process of writing out the tutorial for the Chapter 3 stuff. We waited until the very end of development to do that because we, wouldn't, we wanted to avoid the sins of Chapter 2's tutorials, which is that it was written too vague because we didn't have the mechanics figured out. We knew roughly, like we knew you know about like we knew we were gonna have hq we knew we were gonna have these departments like we knew the the high level stuff how it was gonna work but not the specifics so the tutorial had to be very generic and um and then filled in with a lot of pop-ups and so and, and you know and it was very poorly received people said it's too complicated and it's it's too rushed so uh we knew chapter three we had to do something different so instead we basically waited till i finished coding out all the mechanics and then started writing those tutorials so until we get and because we can't finish the mod until all the writing is done. Um, the the current uh, the moratorium is on. We cannot write a trailer script until we have the mod writing finished. Because until the mod writing is done, we can't build all the features. And we cannot get all the voice acting recorded. So uh, as soon as the tutorials are done writing, then we can write the script for the, um, uh, for the trailer. Because now we do... Obviously, since SS2 launched, we now do story trailers, right? So it's all like... Uh, like scripted with narration and like really planned out um, so that has to be done before we can even start production of the trailer and then trailer production usually takes like a month so I anticipate uh, a gameplay trailer to come out in like June that would be my guess or not a gameplay trailer I'm sorry the chapter 3 trailer be in June. The, game, we, the gameplay trailers we haven't really done a gameplay trailer we kind of do we do teaser story and then launch is the, our, what we've been doing. Um, we haven't tried doing a gameplay trailer, like a proper one of like showing off all this stuff. Like a, the only, I don't really know. Like the only per, the only company I can think of that does like gameplay trailers really is like Nintendo, where it's like they have that voiceover like explaining the high level mechanics of all the things you do. We don't really do anything like that, and I don't know if I want to or not. Damage Incorporated, do you have something for the Enclave for some supplements? We do not. We don't have anything with the Enclave. There is a big... Um, so, America Rising is a big Enclave mod, and uh, Atalino has been working on a sequel to that for quite some time. I would not be shocked if he if he drops it sometime this year. I think everybody everybody in the community who's working on big mods is trying to race to beat Starfield. Like, I wouldn't... I, I, I anticipate... Um, you know, and this is me just shooting from, I don't have any inside information from these guys or anything, but I anticipate we're going to see before Starfield, we're going to see chapter three, we're going to see Fallout London, and we're going to see, uh, uh, America Rising 2. I think those three big mods are all going to release before, uh, before Starfield. I think I do not, I don't know for certain, like I might be totally wrong on that. They might, some of them might decide to wait until, uh, after Starfield hype is let down because you figure like once you know that game comes out it's going to dominate everyone's attention for a month and then people will be ready for another game uh, my the reason I want to get out before then is because I predict this game is going to be so massive and have so much to do that the the addiction level of it and like the amount of time people play is going to be way longer than past Bethesda games so I don't I anticipate people are going to be playing that game a lot longer than than the other games that they've released to date because I mean, you know you think about your first Fallout 4 playthrough uh, I, I think I had, I think I have my first character, I have about 200 hours in him. Like, and that was like playing through every single quest, exploring every single location I could find. Um, that was pre-DLC. And like at the level, at the rate I was playing, um, that was probably like over across seven or eight weeks or something. 
Um, and Fallout 4, like, does not have a thousand planets. So, like, if I do that same thing, if I try and, like, virtually 100% the game when it launches, like, something of that scale, like, I mean, it could be a, it could be a six-month adventure. Skyways, put a sleeping bag in the building where you meet Jake. It's brutal to not be able to save. Um, in this building right here, the that right here where we're at. Oh, for survival playthroughs, yeah, I could see that being a thing. Actually, I'm sur I'm surprised that uh, uh, Sir Rick hasn't suggested that as well. He's a uh, he puts a lot of stuff in the mod because he's a big survival player, so. Like that is why you will find like there are permanent in um, in the Concord hard Hardware Store there is like a, a permanent storage system there like there's a non-resetting container so you can use it for storage and like Jake has a bed upstairs and all the workbenches so you can use it as kind of a little hub um, same thing with like the Nightingale caches like one of the reasons those exist was to help with survival playthroughs. Uh, let's see, Arissa, do you have any advice for making the alley your main settlement? Um, get used to the finickiness of uh, interior plots and, and use them a lot. <laughs> that's that's uh, my recommendation. Um, I personally hate interior plots. Those are a, a those only exist because of overwhelming requests by the community and um, add-on designer seems to like making them too because they're very quick and easy uh, to make. But, uh, but they are so damn finicky to place that I personally dislike them greatly. I still use them occasionally, but I tend to use them outside more than inside. I just hate them as the as the developer because they have all these issues that I don't really have a good solution for. Um, like one of the issues, one of the biggest complaints we get about them, well, outside of snapping, I think snapping is the number one, but the second one is that they often will choose building plans that block walls and stuff. And it's like, well, we don't really have good detection code for space. And then even if we did, like taking that information and translating it in a way that would make sense of the designs that people did is is like there's just not the mechanisms for it um like i now know like since we did interior plots i now know there's a a little trick we can do where we can um basically spawn like an invisible gun and fire invisible bullets in a bunch of directions and and detect when they hit and we can kind of figure out where walls are from that um, but that does still doesn't help us pair that information to the building plan designs to choose a correct one because we can't do that we can't get that information remotely so like imagine you put down an interior plot and then you and you leave and you want to come back and see it built um and you want it to build to fill in the space correctly well while you were gone we have no way to test the individual building models that were designed and because the code that would do the like little shot firing to test for the wall distances is so slow um, we couldn't even like silently like under the ground below you spawn all the different building plan models to do those tests and find which one would would uh, match because it would just it's unlikely it would finish in time so it just wouldn't work good so basically we don't have the tools necessary to do cool stuff like that and so interior plots to me feel like they need a some low level access that we just don't have in fall for anyway that was that was a huge tangent to say that you need to learn to love interior plots if you want to build in Hangman's Alley and place some settlements in it. Nick Carter, is the SS2 patch for XDI users needed anymore? Um, I think it has a few features, but I know the author has asked me to just like make because I fixed one of the issue one of the the um, issues that it was trying to fix, and they asked if I could just roll in the rest of the changes, which I probably will just to make it so that, yeah, it doesn't become necessary. I just, I haven't gotten around to it. And if, if it happens, it'll be on the 3.0 patch day. I'll have to ask him again. I think it was M. Sabala who's does, who maintains that. I'm going to just ask him what else he would need to put into the main mod to make that patch obsolete. Oscar Frey, okay, I see. Just thought I would make the GN and HQ tech more real if we had the faction special ability represented at the location. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't want to. I mean, yeah, it could be it could be fun. Um, we actually had a in uh, Conqueror for a while. We had a we had this system we were working on to have like mobile artillery because the the story in Conqueror is about you play as a raider and you're against the Minutemen. Um, as if we were going to have the Minutemen come up to some of your settlements and set up artillery outside. So we have we've explored that idea some in the past, but haven't pulled the trigger on any of it. 
Ronvalk, not scared that it'll become too much for the most common player. Um, I'm not sure what that what that was referring to. You're talking about Starfield or something else? Or something with SS2. <laughs> Rainbow, I love interior plots. Yeah, I know you do. And you're one of the you were one of the people uh, during alpha and beta testing who uh, had me, convinced me I should not should not burn them with fire when I was having so much trouble during initial development of them. Wood Fuzzy was another one who's a big was a big uh, supporter of them and it was one of the reasons they still they still exist and they didn't get torched mid development. All right, guys. I'm gonna go about five minutes longer. I'm actually, I'm actually getting tired despite all the coffee I've been chugging. So that's good. I need to, uh, I need to get some rest if I want to dodge this flu. The rest of my family seems to have. I really like the urge to kill gunners right now is so strong. I keep, I keep thinking that uh, Jake and company are gonna appear behind me any moment and tell me to, uh, to wait at the, to, to wait there until nightfall. Yeah, well, I'm really, really hoping that the I'm, I'm like having dreams now of the uh, DirectX 12 update, where suddenly all of our performance issues we have in SS2 go away overnight. Like the um, seeing, like I, I love HQ. Like I love, I love the. I know the me the mechanics are. I think we got the mechanics in a pretty good spot, simplicity wise. But I know there's like a lot of problems with um, uh, with how confusing it can be out of the, especially out of the gate. But like just the general concept of like building up. A facility to be for all your people like I love that idea but man does it chug on even on even on, my system's not bad and it can chug in there so I can't even imagine what it's like to have a decked out I, I'm guessing you guys on Xbox don't even bother building up HQ too much because it would probably just destroy your system but man it would be cool if the next gen update takes that problem away yeah vault 88 another one vault 88 would be could really benefit from uh, uh, like like DX12 basically, so that you can have better performance. And there are obviously like downtown Boston. Like man, whew, that was pretty brutal to play. Because I played the the first time I played Fallout 4 was on Xbox. So I'm very I'm very uh, um, very experienced with the pain you guys have gone through playing through the game. And uh, I I think I played originally on like the original. Xbox One, not on Ass or X, the ones they released later, and definitely not on the series. It was just like the original, just the first edition Xbox One I played it on. Surprisingly, I had like no bugs my whole playthrough, which was shocking to me. Um, but uh, I do remember it being brutally slow downtown. Sonic Phil, thanks as always for the awesome stream. Loved last week. Have a great evening and avoid the flu. Thank you very much. Runwalk, I mean that the game will become too long to play to figure all out so that people start to think, oh my god, when will it when will it get to the end? <laughs> well, I think I mean I think that's why they will have like a um you know, like the main like I don't think they're gonna get much longer with their main quests because of that. Like exactly what you're talking about is that some people are just gonna wanna like power through and go to the conclusion. But for those of us who are junkies and play these Bethesda games and can never get enough. Um, like I imagine most of you guys in my audience are, are in that camp of like, you guys have probably played Fallout 4 inside and out, have seen all the side quests and explored all the locations and you're, you're, they're the type that really enjoys that. Um, and so like for us, I think the, um, the, there's, there's going to be, as long as Starfield has lots of like interesting side quests and characters to meet, um, and interesting locations spread throughout that. I don't think that it'll get tired. Um, it'll be just, but that that's the question is, did they have enough, you know, does their, were they able to, to uh, take their, their secret formula and apply it at that scale or not? Um, and I can't wait to find out. I hope, I hope they did. I hope they did. I hope it didn't, I hope they didn't uh, uh, burn, like reach for the sun and, and burn out because of, because uh, it's a tall order. Like, I, that was some, one of the systems they talked about, which sounds absolutely incredible, is the ability to dynamically place entire dungeons. So, you know, like imagine like 
GNN could just appear on any planet, like having that tech. Like that's something that like those of us who know how the how Bethesda's games work, that's like so far that's so impossible that it's like really exciting to have that in mod in mod form. Um, so like for random encounters to not just be a couple of NPCs, but to be um, full on entire locations. Like there's a lot of potential there for like the um, for even though there's a thousand planets to just have like really interesting experiences, particularly on the first playthrough. Like I think one of the downsides of something like that, um, unless you have a massive pool of random encounters, like, you know, if you think you're a thousand planets and you just want to have one on each planet, like your subsequent playthroughs, you're just going to see the same ones over and again. But if they have enough to where there's like multiple available per planet, like then which they had the team they would need to pull that off. Well, they had enough time. I mean, they worked on that game for like six or seven years. So, um, and I know they grew quite a bit during that. So if they, if they expanded their quest team enough and they have enough interesting content, it could be, could be a lot of fun. Uh, but I'm really excited to see what mod authors do with that. Like, you know, you get somebody like a Chris Takahashi, like with the 3d, the, uh, um, uh, interesting NPCs or what's the fall uh, tales from the Commonwealth. Like somebody like that putting out a big pack of like, random encounters and like fully and extremely expanding the the number of uh uh quests and stuff you can stumble upon i like think it'll be even harder to detect that as mod added with a system like that really really excited for stuff like that all right guys i think that's a good time to call it thank you all for joining me tonight um i think so uh, next week I am going to be out of town. Um, but the week after that, uh, I think I'm going to be streaming on my birthday. So because uh, it's the middle of the week. So it's uh, too awkward. It's not, not going to go out celebrating or anything that day. Um, so I might just celebrate with you guys. So I think like uh, the week after next, I might uh, might do a birthday stream. I don't know what I'll do. Maybe I'll do, I don't know if I'll do speed modding or HQ. I have no idea. I just know next week I'm not going to be around. So I won't be streaming. So see you guys in two weeks and uh, we'll do something. All right, guys, take care. Catch you next, catch you in two weeks.